Put on his white socks. All right, I think uh, test, test out. Listen, it's been, it's been about a year. Didn't even know if I remember how to do a live stream. We are here. We are live. GTO headquarters, Las Vegas, Nevada. Poker Life, Power Poker Podcast returning. Shout out to the Legion. We know the Legion out there. They've been waiting for this channel to get back rolling here for a while. The fans are out there in force. Shout out to the Legion. They're ready to tear down fucking goalpost out here. And listen, man. You guys know if I'm back in the house, there's nobody I'd rather talk to, one of my favorite people to talk to about poker, about life, about love. Listen, I feel like the Supreme Leader got to fucking maybe answer for everything out there in the world sometimes. So uh, so listen, man, you guys know if I'm my first podcast back, there's nobody else I'm going to have on besides the one and only, and I'm going to give him an introduction, even though he doesn't need an introduction. He is the long time High stakes poker player, debatably one of the best heads of home players of all time, debatably one of the best trading site creators of all time, debatably now somehow, listen, I didn't know this, I mean, we didn't see this coming, debatably now has one of the best card rooms down in Texas, building the empire with the lodge. The guy's playing heads up, he's battling everybody in the streets, he's playing million dollar buy-ins, crushing YouTube, talking about the drama, talking about the stories, I don't know, this fucking guy is everywhere, and uh, but we ain't heard from him in a couple of months. So we got a lot of things brewing out there. I had to call him up. The Supreme Leader, Douglas K. Polk is back in the house. Mr. Doug, welcome back to the show. How's and, it going? And boy, does it feel good. First, I've got to apologize to the Legion here. Uh, I actually, it's been so long since I've recorded content. I didn't have my computer set up. I'm just like, I have wires. Stuff's not plugged in. So definitely my bad the delay there. Uh, but one thing before we get going, Joey, I got to say, I speak for the entire Legion here. Uh-huh. When you disappear, it hurts, man. Yeah. It hurts deep. And it's like a void in the poker community <laughs> that only one man's passion for ACR bots can fill. Oh, no. Here we and go. And so let's just, let's just, I think I speak for all of us when I say, let's just, just at least every now and then dip your toes in. No long breaks anymore. We want to see Joey. We want to see his takes. Let's see him get fired up. Maybe a few people get knocked out to fight videos. You know, all the classic Joey stuff. Yeah, it's good to have you back, man. I appreciate it, buddy. You know, listen, sometimes I get in the lab, I get down the rabbit hole. I'm deep down the investing rabbit hole right now, Poppy. And I know at some point in time, I got to come up, I got to start talking about what I'm learning, talking about what I'm investigating, talking about, you know, kind of things I'm up to as well. And, uh, you know, there's only a few people I really love talking to in the poker industry. So that's kind of my thought Amen. process now when I come back to it. You know, everyone's got their own style and strategies. I feel like, you know, I used to do 80 podcasts a year and now... I do one one a year with you sometimes, right? You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I, it, it is what it is. You know, I look back and I, I see, you know, the poker community now and, you know, we're going to talk more about some of the, you know, there's drama out there, right? A couple sections coming up in the show today. We got Factor Fiction, you know, Berkey versus D-Negs, you know, Berkey kind of taking up the new Doug Polk. He feels like he's a new Doug Polk out there. He's got their protégés out there battling Becker and Tice. We got a little puzzle update, puzzle and Veronica Brill, you know, those two are always going back and forth, it feels like. And uh, we'll talk a little bit. Poker Awards, we'll talk a little bit about the celebrity poker rotation I was a part of, talk some charity poker, and uh, a little bit of online poker. You know me and Doug love talking about the whole online poker world going on, but first and foremost, we're going to start with the Supreme Leader and what the hell this guy's been up to, man, because, you know, we've been seeing him start the lodge, build that YouTube channel up to about 168,000 subscribers. I think in the last year, I was going through the stats on YouTube alone, 77 million views and really is turning this into one of the biggest streams in the poker world and uh you know really evolving i mean this is crazy to see the evolution of the supreme leader from a family man to now the card owner in texas i, I, I mean didn't start as a fa I, I didn't start as a family man <laughs> <laughs> i feel like you're always a family guy first of all i mean I, now you got Otis. I, I don't know I, joey what at one point when we were in our younger and wilder days uh we were on the prowl back in the day that's so, true. I actually hold on. We, Doug. I, I got some photos now. Listen, I prepared oh these. No. I prepared some oh photos. I was going through some photos. Oh, Check out Jesus. these photos over the years. We got some of Doug in leather jacket. I got a man bun uh, there. I don't know what's happening. Shout out to Caitlin. Uh, we got some some little posters in here that, that I got made. The, posters. The, me and you in the backyard. The hair the haircut thing. I mean, with the mask, COVID. You guys remember that? So uh, listen, man. It's been crazy over these oh, years. You're yeah, one of the first people I ever met in the poker world, man. Oh yeah, beer pong. Yeah. Yeah, oh my god oh wow look at this <laughs> holy crap we'll walk down memory lane oh there we are 
Damn, I was big then. <laughs> oh, that's that's good stuff, dude. You put together a collage. I didn't bring anything. No, it's How all was good. I supposed to know we were gonna launch into a collage. I had you were talking. You were hyping up the power poker aspect on social media. I was like, damn, Doug really likes this name, Power Poker. So we're gonna we're gonna go with the Power Poker and. Uh, you know, yeah, I'm just putting together some stuff. We got some new stuff in the works here, Doug. It's going to be a brand new year of content. And uh, I'm excited to get back on following along with the story of Doug and the Lodge. And, uh, you know, how are you handling everything, man? How's everything going with, with, with young Otis, with the family, and with this new family at your, uh, at your card room? Yeah, th things are good. Actually, uh, Otis very sick last night. I had a fever and sore throat and stuff. So it was a rough night here in the, at the Polk household. But life's good. You know, uh, everyone's healthy and, and doing well, and it's uh, been a little bit of an adjustment to, to the fatherhood game. But, you know, even before I had a kid, I, I was on a pretty consistent schedule and kind of more in the real world again. So I don't think it was too, too drastic. Also, we have like a pretty traditional setup where like I'm the, you know, kind of caretaker, provider, make money, and my wife uh, stays home and she takes care of Otis. So. Um, it was a good good setup. Everyone's happy. We're doing well. Things are good. Uh, on the on the card room front, stream front, things like that. So we've been a uh, part of the lodge for a little over two years now. In uh, January 2022, we bought into the business, and really, I would say for a couple of years, we've been getting things ship shape, reorganizing internally, fixing a lot of the stuff. The lodge started as a mom and pop shop kind of place, and become the biggest card room in Texas. So kind of getting our ducks in a row. I spent a good portion of time looking at card rooms outside of the state, looking to see if there were places that we could expand to that would make some sense. Ultimately, not that fruitful. Uh, there are some options on the table, but they're options that aren't too great and have a lot of bad laws. So kind of refocusing now that we have things where we're happy with, we're gonna be pretty aggressively looking to uh, expand in the state of Texas over the next year or two don't have any exciting news breakdowns to announce there but just uh, stay tuned because the lodge is not going to be just an austin only card room for that much longer yeah i mean listen i've seen the lodge progress you know like you said you guys bought this when it was i was down there i went down there you guys invited me down there for the stream event last year the brand new stream and i got a tour of the old location it was like i mean if you've never been to austin it's pretty sick locations right up the freeway and uh, but it used to be like a corner of the place and there was like a kid's like playground in there. And like, it was, you know, it was like a very different kind of vibe. And then you guys kind of took it over, started expanding, built this new big room. And then you got the new stream room that separate, you got the old room. And it seems like you guys are, you know, really looking to get out there, expand, like you said. So it's pretty, uh, you know, pretty crazy to kind of see that you can go down there, you can start up this new stream. And, you know, cause I think when we think back on what we were paying attention to in the poker world, we were paying attention to these online high stakes games. We'd pay attention to high stakes poker. Um, you know, we paid attention to the, the cash games and the events that most other people created, but now you're the one creating some of those games. And now you're sort of thinking about how to build that out. And, um, you know, why expansion? What, why, why do you lean towards that versus maybe some other options, like maybe coming to Vegas or, um, you know, maybe getting in LA or getting in some of these real big markets. Well, I could go through a long list of reasons why different markets it's where I've spent the bulk of my time over the last couple of years, really what I've been focused on. Um, I mean, you definitely could go to Vegas, but you open a poker room in Vegas. That is pretty much the epitome of bringing sand to the beach. Uh, not to say it can't be done, but realistically, when you look at poker, the margins are much lower there compared to a lot of the other game types. So if you're going to Vegas, it really can't be with the set goal of opening a card room. Maybe way down the road, we would take a look at it. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically entering the market just seems a little bit cost prohibitive for that kind of model. Um, but like, you know, with the location that we have now, just people can kind of visualize this, the lodge as it stands, about 27,000 square feet across four units. Uh, we've got a massive main floor room. We've got a stream room, secondary tournament area, merch area bar cage boxes all that kind of stuff and then that old corner unit where the lodge used to be it used to be a blockbuster video i'm pretty sure so that kind of size you can think of it that's where things all began we actually still have that unit and uh we are in the process of renovating out a restaurant we're hoping that we're going to get that off the ground in something like september october this year maybe a little earlier 
maybe it ends up being something like August. I don't know. It, it's tough with, with contract work, Joey, because you don't want to overpromise. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a food and beverage director and, and uh, can't get that guy to give me a date. Uh, shout out to John Green. But anyway, so I'm hoping in the next, you know, four or five, six months, we get that restaurant off the ground and then we'll have kind of everything fully built out in Austin. I'm pretty, I'm pretty proud of what we've built. If you look at the number of people in Austin, you look at how big the lodge is and how many games run. Uh, it's one of the biggest rooms just period in the country or the world. But you consider the fact that we're in a, a city that only has 2 million people or 2.3 million people. I know there's a lot of tech money in Austin. There's a lot of jobs here. A lot of people that would want to play, but uh, it's pretty, pretty incredible the size of the room given the size of the market, which is a you know, middling large American city, but definitely not something like LA as an example. Yeah, I mean, it feels like to me, you know, you'd fill up as big as that space is really, you know, it's kind of crazy to think about, but in my mind, it feels like with the way that you're able to market the content, with the way you're able to build up the YouTube channel. And, you know, we've been in this YouTube game and this content game for quite a long time. We've been in the lab very deeply to sort of learn this game and understand this game. And it seems like you've been able to apply a blueprint that other people have sort of laid out for how they can have success with a stream and then put your own sort of Doug Polk spin on it. You got you coming in for these big events. I'm loving, I was telling you the other day, I'm loving the strategy of you're doing these big events on the weekends, maybe once a month. You got, I don't know where the fuck you find these guys, Doug, but you somehow find some of the craziest people that we see playing 200 400 and going crazy. Like, I don't know where the, I don't know, like Al, I mean, that guy, Alex, you know, that guy's a bat. I love that guy. That guy's one of my favorite people to watch down there. You got Taras, you know, he's polarizing. I love that guy. He played with me till 8 a.m. one night, one, two, five, 10, 100 PLO yeah. or something like that. So that guy is diehard. You've got these diehards down there. You've got a great, the staff is always so excited. The chat is always fired up, right? Shout out to Yoda. You got Slick Rick. I mean, it feels like you've built this, like like this team infrastructure plus the content infrastructure and really like sky's the limit in terms of what's possible with the kind of events you can create down there. So for the stream, that that side of the business is basically you know totally different side from just where I'm viewing it as, um, you know, it's really kind of the marketing department, right? Really, because you think about how many views we're getting on the show, how many people watch the stream, it will come because of the stream. So. I think in today's day and age, when it comes to trying to offer something that gets people interested, I think you kind of have to have some sort of digital presence. There's a lot of different ways that you can go about that. But really, the way that you advertise your business these days is is organic content, uh, organic content. You know, I think about Upswing as like a pretty good example of that, right? So lifetime revenue for my channel on YouTube is like, I don't know, let's just say $400,000 or $450,000 for like seven or eight years of making YouTube videos. Um, But with Upswing, you know, you you think about how much revenue a product like that can do that actually helps people and teach people how to play the game and gives people an opportunity to grow. You know, obviously something like that can make 20, $30 million of revenue over seven years. So the real way that you make money in the space, the digital, digital media space is you use your content as a way to drive people into what you offer. And then what you try to offer is something that's really high value for people. I think we do that with Upswing Poker, and I think that we're doing that with the Lodge. The experience that you get at the Lodge compared to you know, most card rooms around the country, I think people really love being there. It's a very positive atmosphere, a lot of happy people, and uh, of course, much bigger tournaments than people run, uh, at least in our neck of the woods. But you know, some of our, some of our <laughs> tournaments are like, let's just say 5,000 entries, 5,500 entries that's like almost WSAP type numbers that we're getting in some of these events that we do. So I think that kind of our core business model is use the stream as a way to market what we're doing and then try to deliver on value by offering a good product to the people that, uh, that, that want to partake in that product as for the stream itself. So, you know, looking at the numbers, you're already, you're saying um, so many, you're saying so many interesting things here. I mean, I like, I like this new Doug, this new Doug Polk embracing this content. I feel like I could go into a lot of these things, but I mean, you're, uh, I mean, it makes sense, right? This is what I've always loved about, this is why I like working with you, Doug, is because, you know, when I'm looking around at partners for the Legion, I'm saying, who do I want to promote to the Legion? What kind of companies, what kind of people? I'm getting pitched every day. I got an offer right now from all these companies, do a stream, take over a stream, run an event, invest in this, invest in that. You know how it is, right? I'm sure you're getting pitched constantly by people that want to work with you. And I'm saying, like, I'm looking for 
people that really give a fuck about making something high quality, that really care about giving a good experience to the customer. And in the poker world, the customer is so disrespected by most of these people and the way they're treated that it's rare to find people who are like, you know what, like, what if we just give these guys a good experience? What if we respect the poker player? What if we try to help the poker player out? What if we try to defend the poker player's ability to actually win at the game? And I feel like that's a lot what you represent with upswing and that's what you're representing with the lodge. And I think a lot of people recognize that and they appreciate that because when we look at the other options that are around, you know, like WSOP.com, they haven't even really marketed the cash games and maybe like many years, right? They're like, they, they're just, a lot of these people are just neglected in certain parts of their business or their, their, the way they deal with the customer. Right. And I feel like the way that you've always been is, you know, how do we give you the best experience and how do we provide that high quality experience too? And, um, you know, it's always been something I've, I've definitely took notice of and, so, and yeah. I think, I think there's a lot of people online that get caught up in the, how can I sell something mindset? which is is half the battle or maybe even more but that has to be backed up with a second half which is how can i sell people something that they want and enjoy and is a high quality product compared to what's out there and i've only really started two companies or i guess you could say i didn't even start the lodge but i've only been involved in in these two companies really um with a lot of, with the bulk of my time anyway and so when i think about upswing what, what we did when we came along we, we thought to ourselves hey the way that people learn poker kind of sucks it's a, all based on card runners. It's you come in, there's 5,000 videos. I don't know what to do. Um, what if we taught poker in a, in a course format? You start at the beginning, you work towards the end. Now, as luck would have it, it's been so many years of making content. We actually do struggle sometimes with the number of videos. So we're always trying to curate that and remove ones that are less relevant and make that experience good for people. But basically the idea is people like to start, start at the beginning of something and work towards the end and learn all the way through rather than just get thrown into 50 million videos. Maybe there's even games that you don't even want to play in there. So I think that's a, a big part, at least the upswing strategy is to try and offer people good value. While mm -hmm. I'm on this subject, we're actually launching our first foray into software this week. We are launching the Lucid uh, cash Doug, game trainer. Doug, Doug, I got a surprise for you, buddy. So I actually got early access to the trainer and I'm currently at the top of the leaderboard, big poppy two card crusher <laughs> on the heads up. I'm telling you, Doug, I actually really want to play you heads up and I think I'm going to beat you and I'm, I don't want to, I don't want to go too far into that. But my main point is Brady, shout out to Brady. He gave me access. He's like, Poppy, uh, you know, you want access to the trainer. I'm like, I've been obsessed with trainers. I've met with most trainer companies. I've been met with software design companies. I'm obsessed with trainer, poker trainers, Doug. I really am. And uh, so I had to try out Lucid GTO. It's actually pretty good for the for the heads up. I've just used the heads up so far, but I am at the top of the leaderboard. Big poppy two card crusher. But go ahead, talk about the tool. Wow. Talk about this this program. And uh, you didn't even need me to, to get in there. Oh, I had no, to prepare. So... I had to, I had to, I was getting ready. I was like, all right, let me see what this tool is all about. I can't be shilling a tool if I don't think it's a good tool here. So I, I had to go. Well, that, that's good. I'm I'm glad you got in there. I've been in there a little bit as well, but I'm I'm certainly not top of the leaderboard. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, I think the thing with software is we're just going to talk about poker training. I, I didn't see this this pivot, but I guess let's take it. I mean, we can go a little bit so, to it. We go back to a lot. I mean, we got a lot. Uh, there's a lot of things. Yeah, to, to yeah, talk we got about. tons of stuff to talk about. So, so the thing about poker nowadays is I feel like the training space has kind of fragmented into uh, solver or software based products and more traditional video based content. And that's kind of the kind of interesting thing there to me is that the audiences for those content types are kind of different. Uh, I think like a lot of the people that are really technical and play higher six online, they really just want more software solutions. They want to be able to have um, solvers that can answer their questions for them and that and they can train versus and they can query and they can compare us to the value of different sizes and all that kind of stuff. And then you have a more base level user, someone that might play like one, two full ring live who's like, look, I don't want to know if I need to bet 12% on the turn. I just want to know, like, what do I do when that guy limps and I've got tens, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, b very broad range there, right? So I do think that it's important to try and create courses or create material that can help people in both in both areas. Everything in between as well, of course. But I think it's been a little, little while since Upswing should probably have already entered the software market. And this is kind of our first foray in there. Uh, working with a good friend of ours, A's. Uh, I actually used Lucid to prepare back when I played Negranu, so I'm very familiar with the, the software before. It was a key training tool 
in my ability to beat Daniel. Uh, I trained using all of his sizes on there and I just trade, you know, what's the optimal response to all the stuff he was doing. So this is our first step. Uh, I'm, I'm proud of the product that we're, we've put together here. I think it's succinct, it's easy to use, it's easy to learn from. Um, you know, obviously it, it's just a trainer, right? So you're just gonna be playing with, versus uh, essentially a solver executing strategies against you optimally and then you're trying to minimize your loss rate. But uh, we've got some ideas for, for where we can take this down the road. And Upswing's only going to get more and more involved in the software side of poker training over the next, you know, several years. Mm -hmm. The chat, the chat's saying something about background music. I don't know if there's background music. I'm looking around like, am I, am I, I haven't done this in a while, guys. Stop fucking with me in the chat. But yeah, I mean, listen, Doug, I think uh, you make some good points, right, about the training and about, you know, kind of making, making products for beginners, making products for advanced people. You got your Heads Up End Boss course. You got your lab. You got now the trainer, which can kind of you know, appeal to uh, who I think, I think actually for me, I found with the trainers that I prefer to play with the trainers nowadays, right? Like, I don't know what's happening online. You know, I, I don't know what site to trust. I'm hearing about all these bots. I'm hearing about all the RTA stuff. So for me, I've, I've found some heads up bots. I found some six max bots. I found a bunch of different trainers. I enjoy using, I found some apps on my phone that I enjoy using. So for me, like, I don't know, it almost feels like an evolution of poker in some ways. And in the meantime, you actually can get a lot better at poker, get a lot better at understanding. And um, there's really, there's so many creators I've been watching lately that, you know, I like an upswing level up podcast. I think that's a good one. I've been watching. Yeah, some great, the great podcast, by the way. Like, so, so sometimes I'm driving to the lodge and getting pumped <laughs> up for a session. I, I'll, I'll like turn that on. Uh, I think Brady, Brady's an incredible host. He's like right down to business, keeps it focused on the poker, knows what's going on. Um, really good at kind of leading the guests through. And then obviously a lot of upswing coaches on there that, that are great poker players, but um, surprisingly just great podcast. If you want to listen to poker strategy, they're usually not too long. They're a bit more condensed and down to the point, but definitely recommend checking out that podcast. I like it because the, the reason I like it is because it's short. You yeah. know, I've been, I was looking for Hold'em content to watch and now I got, I got like, you know, six or seven people I'm watching for Hold'em content. And, uh, but I like, I like their stuff that it's short. They kind of, you know, they had one with, uh, with Dylan that was really well, well done. He talked about like three or four steps to beat PLO. And I feel like with poker, you can really complicate things on how to get from, you know, losing to winning. And you don't need to know all this stuff to be able to beat your average game. So I feel like there's, you know, there's this real advanced stuff. You got the, you know, the super nerds, like, you know, we used to love being super nerds about poker. Oh my God, we're gonna talk about a hand for seven hours, you know, like, Great, you know, we're gonna talk about all these crazy shit and you're gonna listen to it like, damn, that's one way to think about the game. And then you got the other part of the game, which is like, hey, you know, that guy's a bad player. We're just gonna raise some good hands. We're gonna bet big and, uh, you know, we're gonna try to stack the, the fun players. You know, it's like the other version of poker, which is, I think, more applicable to a lot of people. So, you know, it's real easy to to focus on one over the other. And uh, I think that's what that show does actually pretty well. Yeah, is they, they take these like simple topics and just give a few main pointers and kind of go from there. This is what's tough with training nowadays is just there's this divide on should I be trying to play optimally or not? And most people think the answer is no, right? Personally, I think the answer is mainly yes with some deviations, but you need to know baseline. But you can't just teach people what you think is right, right? Like I, I can't be like, hey, guys, this is how you should play poker. So I've always tried to play poker. This is the way forward. Because if they don't want that and they don't want to buy that, then you can't offer them that. Like, let me give you an example, okay? How much do you think an upswing poker course by live Hel by Phil Helmuth would sell? Live poker by Phil Helmuth, the great. It would be insane, right? Would that be the best value for your money? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What do you mean? Yes. I mean, I I, I guess like bro, the he's a guy. What are you talking about? Helmuth, you don't yeah. think? Come on. What are you? Are we really? Does the white magic come in the course? <laughs> he I, does come in the anyway. course. Yeah. Sometimes seven percent you limp queens when the guy when the guy when he gets a read. Yeah. That's anyway. Basically, it's just like that's the tough part about poker training and something that we're we're certainly aware of and thinking about as we as we kind of kind of move forward. Um, but going, going back to the lodge, so we're really proud of the stream. We're really proud of what we built there. I think if you look at the viewership over the course course of the past year, so we basically launched our new studio right about a year ago. Um, we're right up there in, in viewership with basically everyone. Uh, I would say Hustler is a little bit bigger than us, but n not even that much so, I don't think. Um, you know, if you look at just like live viewership, Hustler kills us. But in terms of just like overall viewership, including clips and, and kind of just like the compilations that we put out, we're, we're, we're right there. So uh, I, I certainly would like to see us do a little bit better on live viewership 
day to day. And uh, I think a big part of that is creating a compelling show for, for more people. Mm -hmm. uh, I think our team that actually produces the show all the way through from our producer to our staff uh, running the show, to our dealers, to our hosts, to our social media team, to Patches, to Brady, to just the whole team that actually puts the show together is just incredible. And I'm very proud of what, we, what we've done here, especially given the fact that, you know, poker relatively new to the Austin market and again, a much smaller city than some of these other places. So um, I think it's nowhere but up from here for the show. And uh, it's, it's pretty remarkable, the success that we've had in uh, over the course of the past year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we see a lot of people out there in the chat that are, uh, you know, I saw Slick Rick out there. Sarah's Sarah was in there. Vertucci in the chat. Vertucci, this guy is going crazy on, on Twitter lately. That guy's, this guy, he, I think Vertucci kind of grown on me a little bit. I think this guy is uh, low key funny, you know, even though he might be a little bit mean sometimes, but uh, whatever, another topic for another time. We'll kind of talk about that a little bit later. But yeah, I mean, I see what you're saying about the lodge, right? It takes a big team. It takes a good team. It takes a lot of people around you. You can't do it by yourself, which, a lot of poker players are maybe used to doing it by themselves. I know I'm used to wanting to do everything by myself. And when you look at what it takes to build a successful company and a, especially a successful stream, you need a bunch of people in the back that are all doing a different jobs. You need dedicated dealers. You need dedicated people that are going to be players and commentators and community members. And I feel like you guys have done a really great job of that. I feel like Hustler does a really great job of that as well, too, kind of building out that little community that they have with their social media and all the you know, the meetup games. And I feel like they're laying out a lot of good examples that other people can follow. And, uh, you know, now we got more players coming to the space. Bally's just debuted Dude, I, okay. their stream last night at Commerce. They got in the I, mix. I gotta, I gotta just cut, jump in here on this. So uh -oh. I, I, I gotta preface this with saying a lot of great people at the bike. Um, I, I've worked with people like Wayne for years. I, I consider him a friend and I, I like those people. But what is going on with the show there, man? Have you seen the quality of the show? First off, this looks like poker in outer space. It's like, mm. why can I not see anything? The graphics look like they're from 1997. The camera wow. quality, poor. What's going on? I don't understand. They have all of the resources. They, like, just, just if you don't believe me, just, just pull up that and then just look at any other show and then mm -hmm. look at the quality of that show. Why is it so bad? I don't get that. They're not investing in their infrastructure or something. Or yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. I, I, I really did. Don't know. I met with them recently. You know, they were talking about. It. I met with Mitch. Shout out to Mitch Rubenstein over there. And uh, you know, he's kind of coming to poker. He's an executive producer. He's from outside the poker world. He came into the poker world, and he don't know much about the poker. He's trying to figure it out. And I feels like you know, I'm not sure what's going on. Like you said, with the quality of the camera, I did notice that last night that the camera probably needs to get up to date with you know the normal standards in terms of what people are going to expect from a poker show. And and it does surprise me a little bit, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. What do you, what's the answer to that question, right? I mean, that's what they're trying to figure out. They're trying to figure out the answer to that question too. So I don't well, think they want to go out there and have that kind of quality, right? They want to have people tune in and say, Hey, we fucking love this quality. It looks great. It looks good. So what do you think the answer is? Well, it just starts at the top. You, you, your, your producer needs to know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Um, and they need to know how to set this up correctly. Then you need to have, uh, people building out your overlay that know what they're doing there and, and split test and and ask people what they think about how things look and constantly be updating and, and, and improving there they need to make sure you have high quality cameras you need to make sure you have good lighting i mean like l lighting is just basic production stuff right like that's something that you should have down the, the lighting there is not good uh, lighting is an important part of a production um so i don't know i just I, it, it just feels to me like the actual execution of the product is kind of being put behind the vision of like maybe what the company has for it, but you need to be spending money and getting hiring good people and building ground up rather than trying to just, you know, plaster your name on something and, and rehash it out again, because it's just too competitive now, man. Like there's just too many people doing great stuff mm -hmm. to show up with something that looks kind of bad and expect it to do really well. And, and they have great, they have great games. Like if you look at the quality of the games, the people they get in those games, they have, awesome lineups i mean i played on there last year it was probably the best game i played all year i won 600k and i mean the game was awesome tons of huge pots big names awesome awesome stream i think it was one of their biggest streams but if you can't make it look good and you can't make it enjoyable to watch then i, I think you're going to always just lose people so there needs to be a refocus on quality on that show and if they do that they have potential because they have the the the, the framework they have the pieces there but 
They have to rebuild the stream from a production standpoint, improve the lighting, improve the cameras, improve the overlay, improve the sound. You know, they, they need they need a full rehaul, in my opinion, because it, it's just it's just not up to where the rest of the industry is. Yeah, where do you think you find those people at, Doug? Because I don't feel like there's a lot of people who really know how to put on, who have at least proven they have. You know, I think you could look outside of poker and maybe find a very successful or experienced crew who can know how to come in and, and put these cameras in. But it seems like they've been having this issue for a while with the, you know, just like that, that I don't know what I would call it, right? That like normal poker level of quality that we're expecting out of a camera view. You know what I'm saying? Like. Where do you think people find those people at? Because I know that's what a lot of people out there are wondering. I met with a Venetian. The Venetian's talking about they're starting a stream. And um, a lot of people are struggling with that issue of where do you find competent people who know how to do this? I think I think that part of the issue um, is you need to start from someone that has expertise in production and expertise in putting on shows and then work backwards into poker. Whereas I think people are starting with, let's find someone that knows poker and then try and backdoor our way into production quality. And I don't think that that really works. At least that's what the approach that we took with our show. We found someone that didn't know poker that much. They, you know, loosely familiar and they learned over time, but really, really knew their stuff on production value. <laughs> and I'm not trying just saying that just to toot our own horn. I do think our show looks awesome. You look at the, the set, the cameras, the quality, but we took someone that's like a complete professional at production value for shows. And then it taught them that a straight beats three of a kind. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like we, we came from that angle. So probably more of a focus in that direction would be good. But I also think that that company is owned by a very large entity. And maybe that's just not high on their priority list or there's not, they're not allocating resources. I, I don't know why I'm just merely as a viewer and as a friend to a lot of those people, I just think that they can do better than what they're doing. Yeah, I mean, I think that's their goal. And uh, I think everybody's goal out there with a lot of these shows. A lot of the companies I'm meeting with, they all want to put on the great events. You know, I was talking with Eric Person a lot about, you know, what he's got planned in terms of his participation with Maverick Gaming and kind of working it into what Bally's has going on. And I think the commerce is now adding World Series of Poker bracelet events. So these guys seem like they're very serious about competing out there. I'm sure it's going to drive up. You know, Hustler, I'm sure Hustler's going to be fired up about this. They're always trying to put out their own sick games and, you know, these high stakes games. And they just announced the million dollar buy-in game, Doug, which last year I thought that was, um, you know, I thought, I thought that was probably my favorite event, you know, not because I was necessarily at the event, but it was one of my favorite events of the year. Million dollar buy-in game. We saw some sick ass hands. You got, you know, owned by Tom Dwan. I'm sure Tom Dwan felt good about that with some of the, you know, content over years. And, uh, but you play you mixed it up. You brought the heat. Rampage bought that sick bluff. We got to see some crazy action and they just announced million dollar game is coming back and one of the nine players announced was indeed supreme leader doug polk doug how uh how you feeling about that game what's what's your what's the mindset what are you thinking about going into a game million dollar buying game absolute honor to come back and defend my title as one of the top time all-time biggest losers on the hustle <laughs> just, just great 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 to get a chance to continue to, to bury myself down there um now i mean look like that stream was epic. I, I, in my opinion, that stream last year was the most epic stream there's ever been for poker. I think it had almost 60,000 live concurrence. 60,000 people watching live, Joey. Uh, we had Crazy. massive hands, big ass bluffs. I mean, almost every pot, someone ran a monster, monster bluff. Uh, we had an incredible lineup. There was drama. There was gossip. There was, I mean, it was just, it was insane. Like, like as I was sitting there playing, I'm like, I'm stuck just heaps here, but this is just so incredible to get to be a part of something this special. I'm, I think that I, I made it better. I think that I was able to play a role in what made that game so good. I hope, um, I tried to take the loss. Well, I tried to be good for the table. I tried to you know, give an appropriate amount of action. It's a lot of money, but you know, obviously you don't want to go on the show and, and just play tight and try and stack people. So, um, I think I brought the energy that the game needed and I think, uh, it was a, fantastic conclusion to the week weekend of games so i wasn't too surprised to get invited back again i'm friends with the hustler guys i i like to be friends with all of the streams if i can i think there's a lot of good people doing good stuff and i think you know you look at what hustler has done they've been basically the leading stream in this space for several years now kind of starting from scratch so um a lot of respect for what feldman and bertucci have done over there and uh very happy to come back. Going to give it the same kind of 
college try I gave it last time, but this time I'm hoping to actually win some money, Joey. Wouldn't be wouldn't be the worst to win some money this time. Well, listen, we got the lineup. They announced Airball. Shout out to Airball. Airball is going to be next. Airball looks like he needs a hug, first of all. Every time I see him, I'm, I'm like, man, I got to just... I know a lot of you guys out there, they get a lot of haters online, but I see the guy. I feel He feels like he needs a hug sometimes. He, you know, he just wants to win at poker. He's trying so hard. Sometimes you got to take a break, buddy. Sometimes you got to take a walk to the mountain. You got to go to that hospital. You got to get a little surgery. You got to come back fresh-minded. And uh, we got Airball in the game. Charles is in the game. He's been making a name for himself at high stakes. Tony G's out there. We got the legend Alan Keating. He's going to be on my show. Uh, hopefully, he's one of the guests I really want to have on coming up here. Uh, Santosh as well. Santosh been been around, a new player. He was in that PLO week we did last year. And that guy, uh, I think he played every hand blind, or maybe in every hand blind, but he played a lot of hands. And uh, hands, we got Brandon Stevens, and we got Peter. So... Who else in the chat out there? Who else are we expecting to see in that game, Doug? Are you are you, are you wanting Tom Dwan to come back get a little revenge on Durr? Or uh, you know, chat, what do you guys think? Who do you guys who are you guys looking to see in that game? Well, I'm I'm happy to play in whatever lineup people they want to put together. I think I think it's gonna be great. I'm I'm sure the game will be a good game. It'll be fun. Um I, I did enjoy playing with Rob Young last time. It'd be fun to maybe once in my life beat him in a pot. So <laughs> if, if he could get back into that'd be cool. Uh, always good to see some, some people like Heralibus and uh, yeah, I mean it, it was good. It was it was a fun game. I, I think that I think that the lineup. So just some feedback from from the way it went down last year. I think that it would be better in general with something like this to try and do less days, and really focus on having good lineups and having people that can jump in. It got it kind of got on the rocks last year where the day before the last day it was supposed to be the last day it got canceled to put the next day and then there was another day where uh they lowered the buying from million to 500k to let one a player in and you, you gotta do what you gotta do I, I i said this before and i'll say this now i think if it's gonna be a million dollar game that's the hype that's the billing that's the advertisement i think it should be a million dollars i know it's tempting if you have a player that might make the game more action to lower it but i do think that that's kind of the premise of the game and just try and run less days and really try to make them special. I also think you need to have people in there that are are okay losing a million dollars or two million dollars or whatever it might be. Definitely some people in this lineup that are totally cool with that. Uh, maybe not totally cool, but they're willing to do it. So I think some of the early days on the game played a little tighter than maybe people were hoping for with it. And then my one last piece, and by the way, these are just small things. Like, I, like overall, I think it was it was a huge success, but... I do think that the blinds need to be bigger relative to the stacks. Um, I, I understand that like you make the blinds too big, it gets insanely gambling, people get wrecked. But if it's a million dollar game, it's not unreasonable for the blinds to be 2K, 4K or 1K, 2K with a 2K. These should all have antis. When the blinds are 500, 1K and you're a million deep, you're just so deep that it, it prevents massive pots from getting played. And one of the big reasons why I think it got so sick in that last day was at points we were anteing 5K. I mean, that's basically like 2K, 4K. So I do think that the blinds need to be bigger. I think that there should probably be less days. And I think that just kind of all those things together would really kind of make it pop off. That said, it's going to pop off anyway. I'm sure it's going to be fantastic. I'm excited to go back. I did see that the date overlaps with the Heads Up event. Mm -hmm. Hustler, Hustler uh, Casino Live tweeted at me saying I could play this and then that afterwards, but <laughs> if there was a seat in, in the million dollar game or the Heads Up, I would play the million dollar game 50 million times out of 50 million. So um, <laughs> I don't know. I guess I'll have to see how it goes. I do love the Heads Up event though, Joey. Yeah, didn't you win that Heads Up event last year? Is this the same one? Was it 25 no, or the 10? No, no. I, I got, got second. second place. Oh yeah, I was going through the titles. I'm like, I thought he lost that to Chris Brewer. I'm like, why did he say he won the won the? No, <laughs> why would he say in the video yeah. he's won? I was going through your YouTube videos, but it's uh okay, yeah. So okay, so you got the heads up event, and you're kind of. I saw you on Twitter. You're talking about do I play the million? Do I play the heads up? Yeah, I mean, I think the playing the million dollar game makes a lot more sense. You know, this is going to be one of the biggest events of the year. The documentary. I know the documentary has been uh, hard at work. That's documentary is going to be coming out leading up to that event. So. uh I think there's going to be a lot of hype around this event, and uh, who knows who else is going to be in the game. We don't know who's going to play in the game. Maybe Eric Person. You know, we we he's a guy I want to see in the game. I think Rampage. People want to see in the game. Mariano last year. Dude, he kind of that got bluff from that bluff from Rampage was sick last year. Yeah, I mean, what do you what are your thoughts about about Rampage's journey? Right, you know, he, he once you go, I talked to him a little bit. Once you go at that point where you're making million dollar bluffs, like how do you ever go back down stakes, and how do you ever? Like, how do you ever find that feeling? Again, he talks about that feeling, that rush, and these experiences that he's having. I mean, this guy's 
skyrocket up these stakes and now you pull off that and then you got to go back and play these much lower stakes and kind of deal with the that mindset so uh you know what are your thoughts on his journey and what you've seen from him well i, I can't i can't put myself exactly in his shoes right because we have very different philosophies um i i've been a lot more conservative with my bankroll management uh, i've never put myself in a position where losing in the game is really gonna hurt me or upset me um so I know I got made fun of for only taking 25% of myself in the million dollar game, which by the way, 250k buy-in. I got berated for how poor I am, but whatever, <laughs> whatever. Uh, I, I always make sure that when I'm playing poker, I'm playing for an amount where if I lose, I'm okay. I'm not saying it's going to be fun, but I'm fine. Like financially, it's not going to impact me significantly. Um, whereas at least I don't know Rampage very well, but from the outside, and from some of the comments he's made since the downswing he went on, it seems like maybe he's gambling potentially above his means. I'm not saying that he is. I'm just saying, again, based on the coverage, some of the statements he's made, I saw him uh, on Bertucci's podcast talk about this a little bit. Uh, I have never cried uh, during a downswing, I can say. And I've had some rough downswings, but I just always was responsible with my approach. So those things said, seems like he's going through pretty normal-ish variance for the stakes he's playing. I mean, look, like, this actually is a segment. I almost wanted to do a video on this, Joey. I was thinking about making a YouTube video the other day. There is a surprising number of really good players who on streams are down money. I'm down 3K on streams mm -hmm. in my life. And, you know, I don't even know how good my ring game is necessarily, but I'm not even a lifetime winner when I play on streams. Jungle Man is a top 10 biggest loser ever or something like that. It's just, it just, just factually correct based on the, the data that we see online. Now, Jungle, I think, kind of falls in the same pitfall that I do where we come from a heads-up background and we both, frankly, just play too loose and just punt off in spots. Uh, and he is incredibly entertaining to watch because like, I see so many Jungle clips where he's just like in a costume running some insane bluff on somebody. I'm like, what am I even looking at right now? Um, you know, Jungle, obviously incredible player, but I think when you look at what can happen in a small sample of hands or in a small sample of shows, it's incredibly easy to lose a million dollars if a lot of your buy-ins are like 100K or 200K or 50K. You know, let's just say your average buy-in is 100K. That's 10 buy-ins. So what, dude? People lose 10 buy-ins all the time. It's not even that huge of a number. So I do think that you kind of got to be realistic with the swings for the game. If you play these gigantic ass games, I mean, Joey, the last time I played quote unquote 2550, the last 2550, I played a $509,000 pot at 2550. Mm -hmm. Okay. How, how much money could you lose in that game? I mean, you, you could lose millions of dollars in games like that. So I guess like to kind of sum it up, I would say that um, it comes down to how much risk you're willing to take as a person. It seems like Rampage is generally speaking okay with taking large amounts of risk. Overall, that has panned out for him so far, but that is going to sometimes swing back the other way. And when it does, it's going to sting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this is something, you know, a lot of, we haven't seen the, yeah, we saw like, we didn't see these young guys come up and these young guys, you know, the online high stakes went away. And now we've basically had this whole entire new ecosystem of these high stakes stream games that didn't really exist five or six years ago. So we're seeing the first generation of some of these new players, the new young guys who've come up through content and now they're playing, you know, in front of the world, right? You're seeing Nick Airball go through this where, you know, he was winning a lot of money. Now the guy is on the downswing and it's really just a part of life. Like you're going to have these moments where you're winning a lot. You're going to have it where you're losing a lot. You're going to feel like a God. You're going to feel like the man. And then you're going to feel like a fucking idiot sometimes. And that's really the normal poker career you go through and being able to handle those emotions. Something we've always talked about here on our shows together on my channel the poker life channel i mean it's this is like a core theme is it's all about the mindset you have when you're trying to make it for 15 years in poker 20 years in poker and it feels like you have been able to figure out what that mindset you need is to be able to make it and uh, i guess you know when you see these young guys what, what what's some of the advice you might give to them with you know some of the problems they seem to be handling and experiencing that um you know that you're seeing at the lodge or at the content world well poker is what you make of it and if you are more conservative, then you cap your upside. And if you're more aggressive, then your ceiling gets a lot higher, but your floor gets lower. So 
you know, there's all these standard rules of thumb for buy-ins where it's like, you should have X buy-ins or Y buy-ins. And I've given ranges myself over the years, but a lot of it really comes down to personally how much risk you're okay with. And that applies not just to poker, but it applies to investing. It applies to just the way you live your life. Um, what is an acceptable amount of risk for you to take? And how much upside are you willing to pass on potentially capturing to protect yourself from those outlier scenarios or maybe even those somewhat common scenarios? So I guess like for the for the younger guys coming up, I, I do think that if you're in your 20s, you don't have a family and you're a pretty good player. I think I think it, it makes a lot of sense to take pretty aggressive risk when it comes to bankroll management. And then when the day comes where, you know, maybe you have people that you have to support and you have people who rely on you, uh, maybe at that point you can kind of reduce your your risk and, and, and play it a little bit a little bit safer. But there's definitely nothing inherently wrong with aggressively taking shots into good games, just as long as you you are going to be okay with understanding that sometimes you're gonna just face the sickest, most brutal beats and those can happen in a row and it can it can be devastating. So yeah, I mean, what are your thoughts on all these new young guys kind of coming up and now there's this whole new ecosystem of content creators who are also in the games and, you know, they're kind of like coinciding with the games you're playing in. And, and it's, the, you know, you got like this new generation of the TikTok people who created more short form content and now they're real popular. You got the vloggers that are popular. You got sort of the new school, old school content creator world is popular. You got the general professionals and the recreationals kind of all mixing together in this entirely brand new arena you know, what are kind of your thoughts on this whole new, uh, this new storm, right? This new poker yeah. boom 2.0, almost 3.0, almost in a way that we're right on the, I feel like we're right on the, the beginning stages of seeing what that's going to look like. Yeah. So, so I think people are doing a really good job of executing strategies onto these new platforms that are more attention grabbing and allow you, allow you to get uh, exposure to a new audience. <clears throat> I think that Wolfgang is doing this by far the best. Uh, I know the next gen guys are doing it pretty well too. But basically, the short format for poker is actually quite good. One of the things that always worked for me when I made content is I noticed if I, if I analyzed a hand or I reviewed a hand, the moment people see the whole cards, they stay until the end. And I think that that format is really good for the short format because someone sees pocket jacks, pocket aces, pseudo connector, whatever. If they decide to stay at that point, they're going to stay for the whole clip generally speaking, as long as your pacing is good and um, the hand is somewhat interesting. And, you know, as long as it's not a snooze fest, you're going to probably get them to stay. And so that makes it very compelling content for uh, short formats. And the short formats are something that these platforms are really looking to serve up. And because you need so many pieces of content to fill the demand, right? Like you think of YouTube videos, someone makes YouTube videos probably like 10, 15 minutes. So if someone spends a couple hours on YouTube, maybe they watch 10 videos or 12 or eight, whatever. But if you want to serve someone up on Instagram shorts, maybe the average time they watch a short is 20 seconds and they spend an hour on there. You need 180 pieces of content. So the ability to get a unique viewership is much higher than on these other platforms comes with trade-offs. I mean, the revenue is terrible on there. There's very, very little money you can make. Again, it kind of comes back to what we were saying earlier. You need to figure out ways that you can essentially organically advertise your own products. That's really where the money is made there. Um, and then the other downside is a lot of times people might not even know really who you are. They just watch this video for 10 seconds, then they're on to the next one. But the upside is you get an ability to reach way, way more people. And if you're able to convert them either through subscribers or through um, just the algorithm reserving them your content or through, you know, hopefully maybe even something off platform, then there's a lot of upside that you can capture using that. So I guess kind of just to take it back, uh, I think it, broadly speaking, it's great for poker. I think anything that gets new people seeing poker and playing poker and seeing stupid hands, uh, I think that that's awesome. And it will only continue to grow the game more, especially with the younger generation as they become old enough to be able to play poker. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of these guys kind of leading the charge have some great strategies and it's no wonder that they're successful with it. Yeah, I mean, you know, we could talk, talk about short form and all that content. That's a lot of the work I do now talking with companies and a lot of my research is focused on the new modern marketing media content strategies that people are using out there. And yeah, the short form stuff is crazy. You've had people go from zero to a million subscribers in a very short amount of time. And with that million subscribers comes a lot of opportunity that you get. 
and all different angles, a lot of good opportunities, some opportunity that might get you in some trouble. And I feel like we're going to see all these new guys start to navigate that whole world. And uh, like you said, right, there's so many, it's good for everybody, in my opinion, because you're going to have a lot of these new games, the tournaments are going to get bigger than ever. And it feels like, you know, we're going to see a lot of new entrants in this arena. Like I said, I've been getting a lot of calls about people starting new online poker sites, people starting new streams, people trying to, you know, build their channels. Everyone's trying to take this game. It seems like more serious. And uh, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm excited. I mean, this is kind of what you've been waiting for, Doug. I feel like a lot of us have been waiting for maybe a moment like this in poker history where the game goes from, you know, maybe where it used to be a little bit back in the mid 2000s when shows were on ESPN and there was poker movies and there was, you know, more of a focus in the popular culture in the USA about the poker world, which has definitely went away for the past you know, 10 or so years. Well, poker content's back in a big way. Mm -hmm. All kinds of stuff out there. People are really trying. There's a lot of opportunity compared to before. More companies are willing to pay money for advertising spots. More shows are out there. There's just a lot of opportunity right now. So it's a great time for poker, poker content, at least as it pertains to physical IRL brick and mortar poker. I think online poker, if we want to transition a little bit over into that kind of category, I think it's got some um, some pretty tough things going on lately. I think that we're seeing the RTA and botting issue really start to boil over. I think we're seeing some of the stuff on GG Poker with some of these accounts that clearly can you know, know who's going to win or what whole cards people have or whatever it might be. Um, I think we're seeing more and more tough problems there. And it does start to beg the question of how long is online poker going to be viable for? I mean, look, like if we play games that are easy to solve or at least somewhat reasonable to solve or you're able to play baseline pretty well if you're a computer, how long can that go on for? You know, like you play at a table, you can see the other eight assholes in front of you. You know, these guys aren't cheating. Well, maybe mm -hmm. they are, but that's probably something else. They're not using some kind of real time assistance. They're, you know, they're playing their own hand in the best way that they know how. Um, when you play online, you just don't know what you're up against. And it seems like even some of the biggest sites are not able to implement policies that actually protect the people. I'm not saying it's easy. It's got to be really hard to do that, I'm sure. But if you can't protect people on your site, it, it just it really begs that question, like, is online poker on a little bit of a timer? What do you think, Joey? Yeah, I mean, I've been deep down the uh, online poker investigation rabbit hole for a very long time. And it seems like it's in some ways, it's easier than ever for some people to make money because once you learn how to navigate the ecosystem and once you learn how to game select the environments, once you learn which sites there may be three bots, four bots at a table, you know, you can sort of learn, okay, well, some, you know, and you got to kind of go some, some places that you might not want to go. And I think that's where certain people are willing to go, right? They're willing to go into the apps. They're willing to go into these private game clubs where you're going to have a whole different environment than you're going to see on it. You know, it's ACR is one environment where there is some of the best players from all over the world. You know, you don't know what's going on on that site. You never know. Play at your own risk on there. You got other well, sites. What, Joey, what was big with that one was it was the first time someone had ever seen bots on the network in, I think, 10 years. On where? On ACR. No one had seen that there was bots on that platform before that, right? What are you talking about? <laughs> You're trolling me. Okay. But yeah, obviously, right. If you guys don't know the story, I covered that story in depth before about the stats for, you know, some of the bots of the cash games. Like I, I haven't really got up to date on that story Wait, in a while. You covered so. that? You covered I did. That story? I, I did. This is my problem. I get, sure? I get obsessed with these investigations. I go down the investigation rabbit hole and, uh, you know, it can be healthy. It can be unhealthy, but I end up following along with these stories. I get very, you know, interested in them. I felt like with ACR and Phil Nagy, Phil Nagy said he was trying to turn things around. He said he gave the refunds to the players after the last investigation series. He was documenting the refunds. And then I don't know what happened, but apparently a lot of those counts are back. They're playing tournaments. They're playing cash games. There's a bunch of data online. You never can trust data. You never know. You know, there's always more sides to all these different stories out there. So, you know, I take everything now with a grain of salt. I don't believe any data I'm seeing online, you know, unless I maybe got it myself. So in terms of, uh, you know, ACR specifically, I don't know. I'm, I, I'm just surprised, right? I thought these guys were really, uh, were really aggressively trying to take that stand. And I thought you got all these American ambassadors. You got Chris Moneymaker out there. They got the true legend of the game out there promoting the site. And it seems like they're they can't stop this problem of, you know, these bots or you know. And then I heard there's stables and there's all these different like people 
just trying to win. You know, some people play in the game legitimately, and some people play in the game of I'm gonna fucking take your money and I don't give a I don't really care how I do it. And um, you know, we rely on the site to police that. We rely on the site to say we're gonna put a stop to that. We're gonna put our effort into making sure this is a fair game. We're gonna make our software fair. We're gonna make our security fair. We're gonna fucking get rid of these stables, right? We're not gonna work with the stables. We're not gonna put the bots in the game ourselves. We're gonna let the game be a fair game. And, uh, you know, I don't know what's going on out there, Doug, but it seems like that is a hard thing for some of these sites to get a handle yeah, on. I, I, I still have to say it was just hilarious when their solution was an open challenge for people to come bot on their network. I, I thought that was a, a, a hilarious angle to come from. You think people are cheating on our network? Well, everyone, come try to cheat. It's like, I don't know if I like the message that we're sending here. Well, let me ask you this, Joey, because I, I have a I have a pre pretty strong opinion about this. But do you think that the ACR bot problem is happening because they don't care? Mm -hmm. Or do you think it's happening because they're completely incompetent at stopping it? I mean, I don't know. There are professional, you know, there's like a lot of once you go down this rabbit hole, you learn a lot about the what people are up to. And these people are doing this full time. Their only job is to figure out ways to circumvent this system. So, you know, on one hand, you have professionals who they make a living running bots or running accounts or figuring out new strategies to beat online gambling or beat these online sites. And uh, on the other hand, you have the security where, you know, like I said, I don't know. I've never been in the back end to go through all the data, to look at the winners, to look at the stats, to run my own sort of comparisons from the poker site side. So it's really easy for me to sit here and talk shit and say, hey, you know, do a better job of this and, and make the problem go away. And some sites apparently, allegedly have figured it out. You know, you never know for sure unless you're the one going through the stats and going through everything. So, you know, I personally just don't know if it's a hard that what that that level of security it takes, right? Like, what is the issue here? What is the problem? I don't know. It's something to ask Phil Nagy about. I feel like maybe you can ask him about that because I know you're passionate about these issues. And, uh, you know, maybe the guy is going to listen to something that you got to say or a suggestion you got to say because you've been dealing with this, you know, ideas in your mind for a long time, too. I think that they're really trying. And I, I just don't think that they're, you know what? They're kind of like live at the commerce. They're trying, you know, they're out there, they're trying, probably some good people. I don't really know many ACR people, but they're, 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 they're out there, they're trying, they're doing their best. And it's just, it's just fallen short and they need to regroup, restructure their approach, come back with something that can actually execute at a high level and fix the fucking problem because they, they definitely care. I mean, Phil, Phil's out there talking about this all the time. He's responding to people. He's making statements, whether he should or not. Um, the guy clearly cares. I, I just don't think that they're, they're capable of fixing the problem um, mm -hmm. because if they were, then they would be fixing the problem. So I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm being fooled and maybe really what's going on is that they just want to seem like they care, but they realize that bots can increase the amount of rake that's being paid in the network. I don't know. But why would you want like a decade of people railing your site for being a safe haven for cheaters? I don't I don't think that they want that. And they're trying to do stuff like the PLO feature where stuff gets reshuffled back in. I know there was mixed thoughts on that from the community, the PLO community in general, but they're clearly trying to do stuff, right? So I think that they just need to take a fresh approach, probably hire, I'm not advocating for whoever is currently this position to get fired, but probably hire a new head of security. I mean, I don't know how long that guy has been there, but like maybe it's time for some fresh blood. Let's get a new approach, Let's get some technical guys in there. Let's find a new way of verifying that people are not using solver. Let's, you know, let's just get a whole new perspective, a whole new plan of attack and just kind of get in there. And, and you know, I know just the guy. Not me. No, 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 no. Come on. Oh, my back. No. Come on. Joey. Joey, you were born for this. Born to save AC. This could be this could be the end of your poker arc is you save the site that you've been railing on for years for, for this problem. I just want the I mean, listen, I'm just trying to make sure ACR, they bring out these Americans. They let the Americans promote the site. Every American goes, thinks, oh, it's America's card room. I don't think it's that out of line to say, hey, you know, can, can we provide some safe games? I think they want that. I've talked with Phil Nagy a bunch. You know, the guy is playing million dollar buying game. This guy's an interesting fucking guy, Doug. I'm telling you right now. These characters in poker are... 
interesting guys. And, uh, you know, you never know what you're going to get with all these guys. So, I've, you know, I learned something every day about people. But about the ACR thing and about GG Poker and, um, you know, GG Poker is going through their own thing. Obviously, GG Poker has dominated the poker scene in the online poker world. They've got all the partnerships. They've acquired all the big ambassadors. They had their own super user scandal, Money Taker 69. Doug, you did some great reporting on that. I'm, I was like, I gotta, I don't know what's happening here. Let me like, I watched Doug's vid. I'm learning more. I learned, watched the ACR vid you did. I thought those vids were very well done. And, um, you know, shout out to Thomas. I know Thomas always working hard as well. Shout out to the team you guys got going on there. But, you know, these guys are now figuring out their own strategies to combat the the bots or combat the problem. You know, they're removing table selection, they're capping win rates, they're adjusting the rake back percentage depending on what kind of player you are. They're hiding the ability to data mine to get the stats on these players so the community to be able to police the issues. So now we're seeing the response that each of these sites is deciding to take. And what are your thoughts about GG Poker? Because obviously every change is gonna have their critics out there. What do you think about some of the moves you've seen them make? The GG Poker one's tougher because it's a lot more complex what the issue is. And the number of accounts in question seems at least debatable. seems like there's been at least a couple that for sure were cheating in some capacity. And then there's been some ones that maybe are a little less clear cut. And then the question has to be asked if there are ones that are cheating. And then there's ones that are maybe cheating that how many are just cheating and getting by without anyone ever knowing because they're just reasonably cheating or just using it occasionally or whatever it might be. So look like I can't sit here and say their code is wrong. They got to do this in the development code because I have no clue what they should be doing. But what I can say is it seems like if somehow you're transmitting who wins a hand before the action has taken place, it seems like we got a pretty big problem. I don't know whether that means that it needs to be randomized um, later on, like not until a decision is made, the randomization happens. That feels like an easy solution to me. I don't know. Um, but it seems like a pretty massive security flaw and definitely something that you should be wary of if you're going to be trusting your money playing, uh, playing on this website. I mean, look, it's the biggest site. I know a lot of people support them. I know that they've done a lot for poker. Um, again, like I do think that there are a lot of good people trying to trying to grow poker there. But uh, security of the whole cards has got to be priority number one, in my opinion, for an online poker site. It just mm -hmm. has to be. Yeah, I mean, we don't know what, what exactly the issue was with that in terms of these guys being able to access it. I guess they found the win rates through one of the data tracking sites, and now they're getting rid of that data tracking ability. So, you know, it's always been a big thing in the community where the community can see the games, the community can go over the hands, the community can point out these issues that it seems like poker sites are, you know, someone's always able to circumvent something, whether they're inside man, whether they're an outside man, whether they're some wizard programmer, whether they just found a simple flaw in the code or in the system. And, you know, that happens all the time. That's what every, a lot of people are trying to do that out there for every game, every, every stream, everything. If they've got access to the cards, people are going to try to find how to get that information and be able to use the information. It's a never ending game. It's never going away. No matter what you do, it's always evolving game as well too. So, you know, with GG Poker, it hasn't been, you know, obviously that issue stood out and, but does it make you worry about recommending the site or does it worry? How does it make you personally feel? Would you be okay playing there? Or, you know, are you just say, Hey, that's, that's poker. Dude, I, that's what it is. I've not played online poker in seven years. I played first that's Daniel Negreanu. Mm-hmm. And then I played a people to prepare for that. That's it in seven years, Joey. Mm -hmm. I guess I did a couple of streams on Twitch or something. But when someone asks me, where should I play online? I'm like, I, I, I don't I, find someone that's, you know, maybe not such a washed up has been, you know, <laughs> like ask someone that maybe has pressed raise on a site in the last five years. Mm -hmm. Find someone that actually has any clue what the rakes, what rake is like on these sites. What you can ask me, Doug, what are the biggest sites right now? I, I couldn't even tell you. I mean, I don't know, like, are you, what about you, Joey? Are you recommending sites to people at this point? Uh, no, not really. I don't recommend. I mean, okay, if I recommend thought. a site, it may be, maybe something like a regulated site, especially in America, you know, I'm just putting my faith in that, but I haven't done enough research into what's really going on with a lot of these companies, a lot of these sites. And that's kind of how online poker has always been in my mind, where you play at your own risk, no matter where you play, you try to put yourself in good positions to win and you try to protect yourself and it's always going to be a predatory environment there's always going to be people that are trying to take your money some way and you know some people are going about it fair some people are not going about it fair 
You know, that's what it's what that's the comes with online poker that comes with poker live poker that comes with any poker game. So to me, you know, it's just now there's just many more options and there's the sweepstakes model. There's the club model. There's the regulated model. There's the black black sea model, the black market model, you know, the gray market model. So there's just all these different options and you having to learn how to navigate that is going to be, I think, unique to everybody, whatever they're playing live or online or cash games or tournaments. So to me, it's more opportunity, but it's also more opportunity for both sides to take advantage of that. Do you think people should play poker on GG Poker right now? Uh, I'd probably play the tournaments. Why not? I mean, if you've got a big tournament with a big field. Oh, and... cheating. The cheating happened in tournaments. A bunch of it. For what? For, for the bots and stuff like that? For the the glitch where they could see who would win at showdown or who was ahead or whatever. whatever the I, I forget the, the specifics of the technical breakdown, but... This happened in tournaments. I mean, I'm gonna take my I'm gonna take my personal risk, right? You know, if I if I think if it's a big field or something like that, like, like if GG Poker like, was here, it, it depends how much first place is, Doug. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, I mean, I I play I I, 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 I play against bots all the time. Like, all I do is battle against bots and trainers. I'm always trying to find the best bots out there. So I'm used to play. I'm assuming all the everyone's cheating at these games. So. Like I know what I'm getting myself into. I'm getting myself into fucking. This is a war out here. I'm not. I'm not expecting like, oh, hey, buddy, sit down. You know, we're gonna deal you the same cards. Everyone else is getting like, ah, buddy, I'm not delusional about poker anymore. About how what's what people are doing out there these days. So you know, we could say I'm too cautious, and uh, that's great. But at least I know when I play my bots that my bots are fucking working together against me. And uh, I don't gotta wonder, so you know what I mean. So this like, is the real this is the real reason why you're excited to train on Lucid Lucid GTO is because it's giving you an opportunity to practice for your actual in game environment, which is playing against people cheating. Is that is that what this is? Uh, that's certainly one way to think about it. Yeah, you know, if I ever want to play in that that arena, you know, it nice. just gets you used nice. to it, right? The guy's using RTA. He knows all the stats. Like, of course, the you know, can I beat the guy using RTA? I I find that challenge kind of fun. Might be might be time to head down to the local card room. Yeah, but uh, while while we're talking about cheating, I feel like we got to bring up an alleged cheater. No one knows for sure. Okay, but very recently, Mike Possle, Factor Fiction, okay, has once again re-entered the poker community with some I don't know, little little, little here, little there. Very very picked his spots kind of specifically. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on the recent re-emergence of one of poker's greatest villains i gotta say i'm excited I'm, I'm, I'm excited listen you know the investigation people kind of said i didn't they didn't think i did a, the investigation got out of hand right and uh when i look back on it i would say it did get out of hand you know i i spent 16 i don't know i spent wait all these hours all this time i was obsessed with i'm watching the hands i'm seeing him look at the crotch i'm seeing him put the phone in the crotch i'm like i'm talking to him i'm talking to veronica i'm talking to everybody i got all these people hitting me up and, uh, you know, that whole time was absolutely insane. And I've been communication with Postle pretty much ever, even before it happened, before the stream started, I hit him up. I said, hey, you know, what's going on with these hands? These hands look bad. And ever since that day, Doug, for better or worse, I've been in touch with Mike Postle. You know, it's not like where we, we keep in touch. He sometimes sent me some updates about the cheating investigations that I might be doing a stream on and we read it out. And he's always told me he's got his side of the story. He's got this evidence he's got this whole thing in mind about what really happened to him and he's saying he's got an explanation for what happened when he looked at the crotch and he's been telling me you know i'm gonna eventually i'm gonna say something eventually i'm gonna say something i'm like okay you know i'm, I'm waiting like i'm is the guy gonna say something or not you know it looked like he's looking at his crotch it looked like there were some crazy hands and uh you know yeah so it's finally came out i listened to what he had to say and we've been talking a little bit more since then i'm trying to understand where this guy's coming from, you know, he's saying it should be fair for him to be able to tell some of his story. He's got an explanation. People might not agree with the explanation. They might think the explanation isn't true, but at least he wants to be able to try to tell the story from my understanding. And, you know, he feels like he wants to clarify some points that people are using against him and believe that is true. That isn't true. So, you know, I'm just kind of taking it in. I'm talking with the guy. Uh, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to be open-minded as well. And I'm trying to see both sides, but you know, obviously I've never been in a situation before. This is a very unique situation for me to be in. And uh, I don't know, Doug, what do you think about it? Cause you, you kind of listen to what a little bit, what he had to say and, um, you know, reflected on that whole thing that happened with Postle back in what 2019 now. What I'm mainly interested in is when he's going to come clean. Um, I'm not really interested in, in rehashing the I'm innocent. I'm just as good as pot ripper and I'm the greatest ever. That's why, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, um, 
Yeah, I mean, when he wants to come clean, I think it's going to be fascinating. I think everything until then, bit of a snooze fest. And I don't see how this is any different than before. Mm -hmm. So his, just, his, it, just, so it just seems like the exact same thing all over again. I mean, look, it's, it, it's kind of like the Robbie situation, right? I mean, like if Robbie comes out and says, like, I have a new information about why I'm innocent. We're like, OK, I don't know. Like what, other than actual proof at this point or confession, What's going to change anyone's mind on either of those? I don't know. He said, this is what I'm saying. He's saying the data that was talked about, the data that was compiled was not correct. He's saying dude, that there wasn't all the add-ons accounted for. The pot ripper comparison isn't true. There are more losing sessions that are out there of him. And he's saying that in terms of the crotch, that's what I go back to, right? Like I witnessed the guy put the phone there. And then start looking down in the middle of hands. And I think that's what everyone wants to explain for. And he says he has the explanation for that. He says he has the proof on what, why that was happening. So he's saying that it wasn't, it was, it wasn't true. It was a prank. Oh, it was a prank, bro. And he got the, uh, he's got the evidence to prove bro, it. Bro, it was a prank, I'm bro. just, what? I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, that's okay. what, that's what. Where was this response five years ago or whatever? Or for whatever it was. I, look, Joey, the guy the guy clearly cheated. Mm -hmm. Clearly. Okay. And there's no smoking gun. So it's going to go down in the sands of time. But anyone that's able to use their brain to think thoughts will be able to put this together. This guy was the all-time biggest winner ever at 1-2 and 2-5 by looking at his crotch and playing basically perfect in every single river spot no matter what. And then he's going to say, oh, no, I lost five sessions you didn't track. Oh, dude, oh, oh, oh. Why, why, are we, why are we doing this, Joey? Mm -hmm. Why are we doing this? Well, I think he says he didn't play perfect. I mean, listen, I know I've asked him all these questions, well, right? So I know what his answers are to these questions. I've talked to him. Right, I'm trying Mikey. to figure it out. I'm being a good investigator, in my opinion, right? I'm at least hearing this guy out. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. All right, Mikey, if you're listening. I would love to do a one-on-one -on -one in-person interview where we're going to go through things. We're going to talk about some hands. We're going to talk about some spots. We're going to talk about some statistics. We're going to get to the bottom of what you actually won. And then I am going to propose something to you right now. Hmm. Assuming that players are willing, how about you come on down to the lodge? We'll provide the bankroll. I'll provide the bankroll. And we'll do a Mike Postle challenge at the lodge where <laughs> he gets to play any winnings he wins entirely. Total free roll for Mike Postle. Okay. And we'll, we'll, we'll put in a few hundred hours of play. You can play versus all of the one, three, two, five players at the lodge. These are not players that... I should be careful how I phrase this. <laughs> You're going to do just... If, if you can handle your own at Stone's Gambling Hall, you can do just fine down here at the lodge. We'll, we'll make sure to track everything and it's done fairly, assuming the players want to play with Mike Postle. And let's just see if he can run it back. And if he can get anywhere close to that win rate, I'm willing to eat my own words as he breaks in my money. You know what? Gonna you know what's going to happen, Joey? You know what's going to happen, Joey? What's going to happen? Not, he's not going to win anywhere close to what he won before. He's instead going to not take me up on this or lose or win small. He's not going to be the greatest poker player of all time. And I do hope he brings his hat because there's going to be nothing in that crotch to help him at the lodge. I'll tell you that right now. All right. So you're saying if the guy wants to come down there, you'll put him in the games, you'll let him prove himself at the tables. And I think yeah, that's what everybody it. wants to see. I just want to see, the, I want to see, yeah, the, the, I want to see the guy play poker personally. I don't know what happened before. He's got his explanation. We saw what we saw. He wants to go over the data. He wants to go over the hands. He wants to talk about the incorrect information. He says that he didn't play perfect in every river. There's plenty of rivers. He didn't play perfect on. There's plenty of times Part, he totally made mistakes. Fine. I, okay, you don't think so. I've been through some of the sessions. I've seen some of the sessions where he wasn't playing in that same style. But, you know, I haven't seen. I've, I've only watched. I think I've watched maybe like 20 sessions. There's 90-some sessions on there. So there's way too many sessions on there where unless you're spending hundreds of hours going over this thing, then, you know, you're never going to be able to see all the sessions. So he's saying he put in that time. He put that date in. So maybe he's going to take you on your offer. I know he's talked to me a bit. You know, we talked about doing a show at some point in time sitting down i really want to play the guy heads up personally you know for whatever happened i i just want to battle that guy heads up and uh i want to put him to the fucking test i want to see what he's got i've always i've always said that i want to play this guy heads up and that's what it's a, it's about this is about poker to me and uh and you know i think that's what he wants to do. i think he wants to 
be able to play poker. I mean, what do you think about letting letting a guy like that into these poker games and putting him on a platform and and seeing what he can do? Because I know some people might have an issue with that. Okay, so these people that think that they can control who gets a platform or not are just hilarious to me. This guy is like top five most famous poker players from the last 10 years. Oh no, we can't let him have a voice. The, the, guy, the guy's famous. Mm -hmm. Anywhere he goes, people are going to know who he is. And anyone that he talks to, he'll have an audience. So I think that the trying to like de-platform and de-voice people argument is just really dumb. And I think it's like kind of dangerous the way that we're headed as a society where I don't agree with that person so they shouldn't get to speak. That's stupid. Let the guy talk. As long as everyone, you know, is a consenting adult, we're good. Let's, 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 let's do this out in the felt, Joey. There's nothing left to say. Right. Either he can either either he is the greatest gift that poker has ever seen or he's cheating. Let's settle this on the felt. Mm -hmm. I would love to host it. OK, well, the offers out there from Doug Polk. So, uh, you know, we'll see what he's got to say. And uh, I don't know, maybe you take you up on it. Maybe not. I don't know what to expect. But, yeah, we'll keep you guys updated on that story as well. Um, let me go over the notes here, Doug. I know we covered some of the ACR stuff, covered most some of the GG poker stuff. And obviously we're going to stay updated on all these situations guys i'm kind of monitoring everything we went over some of the lodge i think one thing we didn't talk about the lodge was how you're navigating uh playing on the lodge playing poker on the lodge as the owner of the stream this is something i got a lot of questions about i got some concerns about personally as well too so we've seen you on there and you're taking on all comers you were playing this heads up challenge you played rampage you played scott ball you played kevin rabichow you played the that fucking wizard owen with the glasses and you're taking on all comers at high stakes, battling out there. You're battling in these high stakes games. You know, what's been your thoughts on being able to play the games that you can create and you are basically able to do whatever you want to those games, to those lineups and, yeah. and uh, you know, the kind of position that puts you in. And now, you know, I was looking through high roll poker and um, let me pull up my screenshot here. So I have you at the lodge, Alex, shout out to Alex. This guy's a fucking sicko, bro. Uh, up 1.1 on here. I don't know how, how accurate these stats are. You're gonna have to tell me, but yeah, we got the player profile for you as well. Looks pretty, pretty accurate. Yeah, they're pretty accurate. looks pretty good. I mean, you know, it says 529 total hours played in all streams. Like you said, negative 3K overall. I mean, it's not like you're necessarily, uh, you know, I think maybe high stakes poker, that that big game at the lodge, you know, these, these, these data is skewed so much by if you have a really big losing session at high stakes, like the data is really skewed. Yeah. So I've been talking with Michael about adding in different filters and different features. So you could kind of filter through the information to figure out, you know, who's winning, who's Michael, losing. Michael, on first name basis with the high roll poker guy. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking that's definitely a company I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about investing in for sure. Yeah, I mean, that's a very interesting company. I, uh, I really loved poker table ratings back in the day when you could add that whole leaderboard, the gamification element of poker. You could figure out who's winning, who's losing, who the best players are. Because when I watch these streams, there's just so much hands, there's so many games, and you have no idea who's winning, who's losing, who to root for. Like, you just have a bunch of people making claims about they're, they're this or they're that. And, you know, I like it where you have those sort of leaderboard systems where you can see who's winning. And I think that's great to be able to see who's winning. I'm curious what you think about that. And, uh, you know, just the overall experience on playing on yeah. the lodge and playing in those games. Okay, so a lot to, lot to tackle there. Let's just start off with me playing on the show. So. I totally understand where people come from with owners playing on the show because there is an informational asymmetry where for the owner, you know what's happening in the back, you know the people, you know all the staff. Um, that said, with our setup specifically, there are no hole cards anywhere for anyone. So there really isn't a way that you could have a situation where there are cards being relayed. Uh, it's just not possible. So I think that that should at least put some degree of safety in people's minds. Uh, also, with how much I've won at the Lodge, so I've been the biggest winner on the stream. Uh, that said, I've also played, I would imagine, the most hours or one of the most hours or whatever. Uh, and if you boil it down, I think I won like four or 500K in heads up. And then I've won like, you know, a couple big sessions at the very high stakes games. And then I think if you look at like overall, I think I'm actually a loser in more sessions than, than I've won there. So... You know, I think when the stakes get big, I probably play a good amount better than when the stakes are small. Um, but I think that, you know, honestly, man, like the only time where I've ever heard comments like, oh, Doug, is it the kind of comment was when I final tabled our main event at the LCS. So every every summer or every spring, we have a big series. It's our championship series. 
and we have a $2 million guarantee main event. And the first time that we ran it, I final tabled. And I could just see in the chat, people were like, oh, owner at the final table, huh? Like those kinds of comments. But I think that when people look at like my track record playing poker and how the success I've had broadly, I think that it's a pretty reasonable story. And I think generally speaking, people feel safe. But that said, like, if someone said like, look, Doug, like, I don't want to play if you're in the game, like, you know, no sweat for me. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, like, I, I've generally speaking tried to play less. I don't. I don't want to make our games tough. Uh, and when I do play, I want to be a positive sum for the game. So, I've been playing less. I've been mainly playing the really big games. People come to town, but um, obviously, I think if people don't feel comfortable, then they shouldn't play. That's mm -hmm. just kind of like my broad my broad take. What, what was the other question? Uh, I guess about the about the high roll poker and about this the tracking and figuring out oh, yeah, the tracking. winners and figuring out the losers and being able to see that kind of information. Because that's something I've definitely thought deeply about. Just that, you know, you, these people are playing on a public stream and the people are, you know, everything's out there. Everything's on YouTube. Everything is there for you to see. But to be able to now people are starting to compile that data. There's a few people out there that are doing ideas like this. And, uh, you know, yeah. to me, it seems like the evolution of these streams is to be able to know who's winning, who's losing. Now I know who to promote. If I look at a show and I see Alex up $700,000, like I got questions about that guy, right? Like, who the fuck is this guy? You know, what's this guy's Dude, deal? That guy, Alex, that guy? He's sick. So, that guy's a sicko, bro. He was a poker dealer a few years ago. Yeah. He was a poker dealer. And now he's playing 200, 400 at the Lodge. Mixing it up. And he is fucking killing me. He is yeah, just he, like, he loves, he doesn't smashing like smashing me dude. in all these sessions. He's texting me talking mad shit. <laughs> I, I, I was like, hey, we have like some big games coming up um, mid March. Do you want to play in them? He's like, hey, are you going to play? Because if so, then yeah, I'll be there. Like, what the fuck is this shit? Like, it's like, he's texting me memes. Like, let me show you this. Let me show you this meme. What's going on in Texas? Texas is out of this place. is a different look, place. Look, 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 at, look at this stuff. Look at this stuff that got sent to me. Okay. I'm going to pull this up right now. So you, guys, Doug, so you can see. Doug apparently got see. a meme. Remind me of the Doug Danson meme. I mean, I mean, look at, look at this stuff. He sent me this. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this or not, but let's see. We're low. Let's compare memes. Okay. Oh, that's him walking you to school, huh? He just texted me this one day. Just like, he's got a backpack and then, and then like, I'm just like, I guess the kid in this meme, like, what's going on here? <laughs> I responded and said, that backpack better have my money in it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this guy's, this guy's a legend, man. I mean, he, he's, he's just on like, you know, a crazy run up. He's, he's crushed the games. He's played good he's incredible tv he will go all the way if he thinks you're weak he'll make big calls talks a bunch i mean i think he's awesome for the show and uh he is always welcome back whenever i mean did you see the hand between him and ishan where they both uh, yeah Ron Bala, yeah they played a crazy oh hand, my yeah. god dude that's one of the most insane stupid hands I've ever seen in my life it was just like insane um it's the board is like 10 9 7 8 and it's like a four bet pot and there's bet call flop and it's like raise 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 turn and, and like it's like ace king versus ace four or some shit like it's just anyway i mean he's he's up a lot at the lodge but he's he's been a really great part of the show um so but yeah well i guess like broadly speaking about the tracking sites in general um so i i mean there's pros and cons right like the the pros is that it creates narratives and i, I think like this is something that we struggle with a little bit the lodge I ask myself about this often because our live viewership is relatively poor. We do most of our viewership post show. Um, you know, it's, it's not terrible, but it's just, I feel like we could do better there. And a bunch of it is like, well, how do you build narratives? Right. And you can't kind of, you can't force a narrative. Like you can't be like, Hey, this is local player, Dave, you should care about Dave and what Dave's doing. Narratives kind of happen, you know, like, Either it's someone that's already well known or it's someone like, oh, this is the biggest winner or this is the biggest loser or this is the crazy player or this is like the guy that had that one hand or this guy is na named after an electronic vehicle or whatever it might be. Right. Like those are the kinds of things that build narrative. You, you, you can't you can't force narratives. So one of the nice things about these tracking sites is that they create those narratives and it helps build the story. And I definitely think that like. The fact that Hustler had this for a long time helped build their show. 
I, I think they are net good for viewership and creating narratives. But they do come at a cost, and they come at two costs. The first cost is that people that win will start to get uninvited from games, even if maybe it's not fair. Like Maybe there are people that aren't super, super great players, but they're up a lot of money. They're going to start to not get invited because they are up money. And then the real cost is that the people that are playing for fun or recreationally, they're going to end up in the biggest losers more often. And when they do, it's going to be a lot harder to deal with. And you know, I've talked with people that are recreational players over the years when they lose a bunch of money and they're like, oh, it sucks. Like I'm just getting made fun of. And like now I'm at the bottom of this list. And like, you know, uh, I'm like, I know, I know what that's like. I'm I look at Hustlers, all time biggest losers. I'm right there. Uh, no, but anyway, so it's like I didn't want to say it, it's, buddy. It's difficult. It's difficult for those people. And I'm not saying there's a solution to this because there's not. But when people play poker and they play poorly and they get stacked, they get fucking berated. Everyone I get berated. Everyone gets berated. But when you're someone like me or you're a professional or you're a seasoned person, then you're just like, whatever, it's the internet, you'll take it or leave it. But I do think that people underestimate how much damage gets done to casual players when they see that kind of stuff. And there were a lot of guys that would play on streams, but they won't because they don't want to take that kind of heat from people. And I totally get that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's the downside. The downside is it creates easy funnels for people to pile on to people that are the people that really make these shows go. Yeah. I mean, we saw that a lot back in the day with, um, you know, whenever you see people that on poker table ratings that were down the most money or people that were on high stakes DB or, you know, there'd always be the narrative. I remember Gila Liberté was, you know, he was losing a bunch of money and, uh, you know, I don't know, then those real crazy, well, the, the rail heaven days, I think maybe you shot took some of those games. And now you could see that this guy was down you know, I don't know how much it was, $15 million. What was what was the tracking? Twenty, you know, twenty million dollars. Oh, you so saw much, this guy yeah. was on twenty million dollars. You now said, Okay, well, if this guy ever wants to play, like I gotta find a way to be able to play with this guy because he is willing to lose all this money. And if you're a poker player and you're a professional, you know, that's like your dream spot, especially at those sort of high stakes. And we saw a lot of people you know, be able to figure the things like that out, winners and losers on both sides. And like you said, right, it has its pros, it has its cons and Something I'm thinking a lot about, too. I was just kind of curious your thoughts. I'm curious on the community's thoughts about what they think about it out there. And um, But yeah, I mean, I think people realize when you get in the arena, when you get in the poker games, people are going to be talking shit. And, you know, we've said this for a long time. Well, people are critical. They're going to roast you. Like, yeah, poker players love to roast you. And they love to put down a bad poker play. They love to call you a fish. They love to call you a donk. They love to critique everyone and anyone, unless you're maybe the goat. And even then, they're going to find some reason to critique people. So... I feel like that's just the nature of how poker is, and we could, you know, advocate for a kinder, gentler way people handle these I mean, things. It, it, but doesn't, it doesn't work like that, though, right? Yeah, like, I don't think if, so. If I come on here, I'm like, hey, everyone, be nice to people so that you'll get better shows. It's not going to actually change anything. It's kind of like when people go on Twitter and start, like, issuing their take on Israel-Palestine. It's like, okay, whose minds are you actually changing? And what qualifies you to be an expert in this field? And what good are you actually putting out there into the world? You know, and I, and, and I, I just feel like when you tell people how they should be responding, it doesn't do anything. So you have to kind of pick your battles. And I, I do think like it's something to be aware of. But I do think that there's not really like a solution to the negative feedback that mm -hmm. happens with it. Uh, yeah, listen, guys in the chat, shout out to everybody in the chat, shout out to the Legion. I know we see a lot of Legion members out there. Thanks for tuning in. First stream back in a long time. We got a lot of great shows coming up here. And, uh, you know, I've been inspired. I've been inspired a lot by guys like Doug, guys like, uh, you know, all these other people putting up great content. Like HEL has been putting up a lot of good shows. I've been watching Ramp. I feel like these, the vloggers, you know, they're just, they're power. They just keep putting up fucking content, Doug. They keep putting out a new vlog. They're now they're in Antarctica. They're losing a million dollars. I'm like, what's what the hell's going on in poker these days, bro? We're in a different environment. This is not 2017 poker world anymore. When you know me and you were doing a show and you're doing poker hands and I'm doing the podcast, like this is a brand new game and I don't know what's going to happen, but you know, it really does got me excited and uh, I'm happy once again, you joined me back here as the first person on. I know you've been, you wanted to have me on when you released the Doug Polk and end up and boss heads up course. Sorry, I didn't have you on about that. You know, I, I definitely want to do something separate with you about your heads up course. I've been playing a lot of heads up Nolan Hold'em. And like I said, I really do want to play you. And I know that, you know, you, the God, it is what it is, but I'm willing to accept that in honor to be able to play some Hold'em. And, um, you know, I've been playing PL a long time. 
I hate to admit it, Doug, I'm passionate about two card Potlum in Omaha too. So, you know, it's a whole new day. It's a whole new they world. Call it, they call it the great game. They do not call it the great game. Potlum in Omaha is still the great game. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, listen, shout out to everybody in the chat. Big Jay's out there as well. Claudia's out there. I see a lot of people I've been, I've been spending a lot of time with offline and, uh, and yeah, I don't know. I just want to give everybody a shout out. I want to say thank so you. Wanted to, want, go what's ahead. going on in your life, Joey? Day to day. What have you been up to? Day to day, living in Vegas. Listen, been living in Vegas now for about eight years. And uh, I feel like my day now, just spent talking to a lot of people I'm working with, a lot of partnerships I have. Sometimes I'm invested in companies. Sometimes I'm just working with companies. I try to try to know what a lot of people are doing in the poker world. I'm, I'm trying to stay up to date with what opportunities are out there and, um, you know, collaborations. I'm very interested in partnerships and collaborations and just finding good people to work with, finding good people to support Doug. I'm trying to be healthy. I'm trying to be in line. I'm trying to be, get my life in order, you know, real take on this business game, try to hold myself to higher standards and, uh, you know, really try to provide with the Legion, work with the more with the Legion and, uh, you know, find friends I like to work with and friends I like to talk to. So I'd say right now, like put it concisely. That's what I'm trying to do. Be healthy, but I am in Vegas. You know how it is out here gets out of line. So a lot of drinking, a lot of, a lot of going out late nights and a lot of, a lot of going out. <laughs> you started the sentence with been trying to be healthy and ended it with late nights drinking. <laughs> well, you know, it's Vegas. I mean, that's how everything works. You get a meeting, you know, you yes. go to the lounge, you go to the yeah, high limit, I... you go to the lounge, you're hanging out, you're just relaxing. Everyone, everyone out here is here to have a good time. So being able to balance that, you know, I broke up with my girlfriend. I was dating her for a while mm -hmm. and uh, it didn't work out, you know, for a couple We're of different reasons. And uh, so now I'm just trying to figure it out, bro, 38 years old. Poker player. We'll see. You've, so, been, you've, been pl you've been playing a bunch more now? Yeah, I love playing. I love playing a lot. I've been playing a lot with my programs, a lot with my trainers. I got my coaches. I got a couple great coaches. Shout out to Tombo. Shout out to Alvin Teaches Poker. They've been working with me a lot. And uh, yeah, I got everything I need to uh, play more poker if that's what I want to do, whether it's at Hold'em or whether it's at PLO. So just kind of been getting positioned for uh, for whatever's next, Doug. What's going on with CPT? So C CPT, yeah, basically that was an event I worked with recently. I was telling you, young guy, this guy I met Blake Wynn. He's from the Wynn family out here, former YouTuber. And uh, he got into poker last year where him and his buddy Hayes and his buddy Brock, they started this celebrity poker tour. And a celebrity poker invitational, the kind of goal was to get influencers or online poker personalities or athletes or um, just bring in different people to play poker and then promote the game of poker through these personalities, give them opportunity and uh, they actually use a different model, which is free roll buy-in, where they're providing the prize pool to the players. So I actually think is kind of an interesting model to use. So, you know, I'm looking at investing. I'm always open to deals. I'm always open to the right deal with the right founding team. And uh, yeah, I just watched what they did. I got to know Hayes. I got to know uh, Blake. And uh, I really like what they got going on. I like the vision they have for this year. They want to put on eight events. And, uh, you know, I'd say it's like an online poker. It's like a, it's like an online personality event with athletes thrown in the mix with some poker players thrown in the mix and i don't think we've really seen much of that in a long time so it was a project i wanted to support and uh help get brad owen brad owen was in there he was one of the players i think he did a great job he's gonna be coming back for the next event they have they're doing a single table event and uh i think it's got potential i don't know man i mean they're basically bringing in these influencers who have big audiences who want to get in the poker game who want to have some good content and i think it provides a platform for people to be able to have that content, it's a different angle. And these are young guys. These guys are hungry. They got a different vision. The guys already had success on YouTube. So when I'm looking at people to work with on content, I'm looking at people who've had success in the content game. And, you know, he's got Uncle Steve as a potential advisor. And, you know, listen, I don't know. Sky's the limit, I feel like, with what these guys got in mind for poker. So it's a pretty exciting project to be involved with. Yeah. I think anytime you get people that have audiences to come play poker and, um, kind of shine the spotlight brighter. I think it's good for everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, there's literally no downside to that. So it um, seems like they're doing good stuff and uh, hopefully it can be, you know, something that really captivates people. I feel like I saw a couple clips from it now that I'm thinking about, it, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, I think there was a couple hands. clips. There was one clip that went viral with, uh, I think it was like this girl, Tana, Tana Manju, Mongo, Man, I don't know how to say her last oh, name. Oh, yeah, 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 Montague. Ma yeah, she, she seems, she's like, these people are so popular. It's not like poker influencers where, you know, poker influencer has, sometimes they have a million, you know, you've got 400K subscribers on on, uh, on YouTube. Um, these guys sometimes have like 15, 20 million on some of these platforms. And I don't know how many are real. I don't know how many are bots, but it's a whole new audience that is definitely not, the poker player audience that me and you catered to. So I think it was her. It was a guy that did sports betting, I think. Book It With Trent was his name. And then I think it was an NFL player. So, 
you know, we don't get to see that concoction of players. And those kind of clips do really well on social media because people outside of sports, you know, NFL see it, people in the vlogging world see it, people in different communities get to see poker for the first time. And it gets all this new exposure, millions of views for the game of poker. And I think if you're a fan yeah, of poker, awesome. you're looking for marketing, like this is the kind of projects I'm looking for. I'm looking for shows on Netflix. I'm looking for movies. I'm looking to be a part of shows that are really gonna move the needle. And uh, yeah, I mean, we got this one show in the works with um, kind of like a docu style series show where similar to quarterback on Netflix or similar to Drive to Survive on F1. I think, um, you know, you, we've been in touch with you about potentially working on that project as well. So, you know, we're looking to get the biggest poker personalities, get the biggest poker companies, get the people who want to be a part of the poker story and get them in the mix to be featured on really epic content. And I think that's one of the main goals I have working for when I'm looking to go out there, I'm looking around at people that want to do projects together and collaborate. So, you know, that's why I love having you in the mix. And I feel like your, I feel like your story is actually underrated in a lot of ways because, you know, you don't, you don't, you are, you know, you can only promote so much by yourself. And, you know, sometimes you're the player, sometimes you're the training site, sometimes you're the card room operator, sometimes you're the ambassador. And I feel like you need platforms that are gonna be able to shine a light on you to point out these other parts of you that don't get that much exposure. And I feel like the same is with you and with other people that I feel like are some of the top ambassadors in poker right now that, um, you know, I know we're looking to work with in that project. Yeah, I mean, I, honestly, there might be too much Doug Polk exposure in general for the community as it is. So I don't know if that's really what everyone's looking for more. Um, Never know. But uh, it, it's tough to wear a lot of hats. And I, I, I've, kind of, I've kind of changed my general attitude on this subject, Joey. So I'm at a point now where, uh, you know, I have my family and I have my businesses and they take a lot of work, especially the lodge right now. And, you know, we have the show and we have all the stuff going on. And I've just not really cared to get involved in a lot of the, like the, the drama bickering shit lately. Like if there's a really big story, I'll cover it, which is why if you look at my YouTube channel, the last few stories I covered were like really big stories. Mm -hmm. But stuff like landon versus whatever his face is i'm like Take i it, can't bro. even Why, come on Should i can't come even come on get... back jeremy becker this guy's the daily god of the of the vegas bro come on okay whatever man I, I i just can't i just can't bring myself to to give a shit uh it's just like too much of this stuff is like you know like, i don't know I, I i i guess like maybe i'm growing up i don't know maybe i'm not i think, maybe I think just, it's normal maybe i'm tired maybe i'm just tired but i i feel like I've got so much in front of me and I have a clear roadmap, clear roadmap um, and goals with my business. I think that there is an incredible opportunity right now in Texas to build the most successful poker room chain and mm -hmm. see where we can go from there. And like, if I'm successful in doing that, the value of that compared to like making a video about somebody losing a cross book, I just, I can't, I, I it's just not, it's not even remotely close. So like, my content strategy is going to be do stuff I like, like come on your show, occasionally cover videos that I think are things that are um, high value or will be well received, and then occasionally promote stuff that I'm up to or doing. But I, I, I just, at least currently, like I'm so, like my life is very fulfilled right now. Like I'm very happy mm -hmm. and I have a lot of stuff I'm working on and I'm happy to kind of focus there and then dip my toes in when, you know, when those opportunities arise. Yeah, I think that make, makes a lot of sense. You know, I feel like um, I thought, you know, I remember I, I kind of I thought that about as well, too. You know, I feel like a lot of content you got going on with the lodge is like you got this opportunity to create your own poker world down there in a lot of ways. You know, we grew up watching World Series of Poker. We grew up watching the World Poker Tour and we grew up watching all these big events, high stakes poker. We used to love this content, full tilt online poker rail heaven. Like we used to be obsessed with these shows and now you're creating that next generation of shows you're creating the lodge high stakes series you're creating the heads up tournament you're creating the your own version of your world series of poker main event so it does make a lot of sense to focus a lot of your light you got your family like you said right you got a lot of things going on so paying attention to every controversy with some younger guys might not be the best use of your time and just focusing on what you're trying to build down there and maybe the stories that develop in your own ecosystem are going to make a lot more sense and um you know, I guess that's the evolution of the poker world, right? You know, maybe you used to pay attention to some things and it used to be an interesting story, but now there's just other stories to pay attention to and there's a lot more going on. So you got to really pick your battles and you got to be careful where I, you put your attention to. I also think that there's just such a clear path with the lodge and how we're going to grow it that I look at it and I'm like, where do I want this business to be in three, five, seven, ten 10 years? 
um, <laughs> there's such a clear path that like I can see it. Mm -hmm. And um, when I think about like how important that could be and, and what's possible there, I just want to give that my all. Um, and so I guess like that's really gonna, where I'm going to be locked in on is building out this business and growing it and trying to give people a place to go play poker. You know, you said it earlier in the pod, but most places that they hate poker players, it's like the, they make the least money and all the space, all the shit. And I'm just very grateful to have an opportunity to take advantage of that and offer poker in the second biggest state rapidly growing huge cities, tons of people, lots of money. And so there's just such a great opportunity here. I just want to capitalize on that. And um, I find I find like the process of b business building rewarding in its own right. Mm -hmm. But who knows, man? Maybe next week I'll feel like roasting someone. You never know. Things it's change thing about, quickly. It's the thing about you, bro. You really, you really got like a, I don't know. Sometimes you, you like all of a sudden you're like, Joey, I'm never playing live poker again. I'm like, all right, all right, dog, whatever you say. And then before you know it, you're playing one, two for seven, seven days a week. And I'm like, what the fuck is... Like what, Wait, is what? This, what is what is with this guy, bro? The guy you never know what rabbit hole you're gonna go down. You know what I mean? I guess you I got, did. I did have the bankroll challenge. Now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, like I feel like you got your own art. I don't know. Sometimes you're doing this. Sometimes you're doing that. I'm trying to like what's what's this guy doing now? You know, sometimes you're doing interviews. Sometimes you're doing scandals. Sometimes you're playing poker. Sometimes you're taking care of the kid. Like viewing heads up battles. Like you're. I don't. I don't know, man. I mean, that's the fun part about following. You know what you got going. I guess one idea I, I did want to mention was I know that the Sands Corporation recently got out of Vegas. I think they sold to Apollo Capital Management here in Vegas. And um, I do my research on kind of the, the progression of that company. They're down there in Texas. They just bought the Mavericks from Mark Cuban. Would you ever partner with the Sands Corporation to potentially integrate the Lodge poker brand into something like they have down there? Because, um, you know, I could see that being a good partnership for everybody where you get that space, you get that backing of a massive company with a lot of success, and you get to sort of really really build something you know maybe on another level in terms of what could be possible in there if you, if you considered something like that before yeah i mean let's just take this one step at a time um i'm, I'm, I'm excited bro build, i'm i'm ambitious build my guy. own thing like like if at some point we got acquired by a massive casino conglomerate chain i'm o i'm open I'm okay open to it okay the, the the dms are open joey but okay. I, I think i think we're putting the the cart in front of the horse here just to, just a tad, i don't think so, so. I don't think so because I just met with them and they're building a new poker room here. They're good in brace streaming. Now it's different ownership, Sands Corporation. You know, I don't know, think they necessarily like to promote, um, you know, vloggers or anything like that. But now if they go down there in Texas and I think Texas is going to have to have a card room. So if you're looking at building a card room and you could potentially partner with the fastest growing card room in Texas, like that's the dream, in my opinion. If I'm Sands Corporation, I'm looking at that and I'm saying, okay, I can bring in this guy. He's got the infrastructure. He knows how to build the channels. He knows how to already do this. Like, why the fuck am I going to want to do that myself? It doesn't really make much sense. So I think it's more of a realistic possibility than you might think because people, like the marketing you're giving, the mar this is what people don't realize about poker content is that the marketing it gives for your casino is on another level and one clip you could potentially get so much usage out of that you're consistently promoting your brand your card room your casino so to my opinion the people that really embrace this really back it really get behind it are gonna be the ones that are gonna see these outsized returns and if you can partner with someone who's already the best at giving outsized returns then that seems like a no-brainer so i see what you're saying right about you know that but at the same time you know me right i'm always i'm always coming up with some different idea I think, I, I think we have some steps left to go here but yeah it, i mean down the road who knows all right we'll see we'll see what happens I, I, as an aspiring businessman you need to you know take the opportunities as they come true okay so okay so you're not paying attention factor fiction you're not paying attention to the berkey versus negranu showdown these guys got going on you have you seen much of that because i know a lot of people out there wanted to hear that topic be discussed by you so i have a social media chat and they asked me who do i like in this matchup and I said, well, I don't know who Jeremy Becker is, so I would probably take him. <laughs> well, come on. Why you say that? You guys, why you guys don't like Landon for? I'm just what? saying, like, I, 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 what do I don't do know you? who the other guy is, but I, 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 like, I think I like that in the lineup, in the matchup. Okay, so you're saying you ain't been paying attention to Berkey versus Negrano, what these guys are talking about. I mean, whatever. I'm sure Berkey was spouting some nonsense, and D-Negs was probably getting all high and mighty about it. 
Yeah, I, I mean, don't know. It, it seems like they're kind I, of, I didn't follow. It, I really didn't follow. It seems like they're sending out. They were in like a proxy war. This is, this is a very Doug Polk esque kind of idea where they're they're sending out their bet their their young soldiers to go battle each other for supremacy, poker royalty versus in uh, versus above the fell, Saul for Y versus Dan Negron. You know what I mean? And the fans are loving it. I mean, if you're seeing the reaction, the fans are like really, really enjoying this. Is this working? I'm I mean, sorry. I will okay. say, generally speaking, I. I Berkey's just wrong about shit a lot. So, right. you know, I would, I, I don't know, man. I just, I, I, I can't even, do we have to? I'm just asking. I'm going tell, I'm going through some of the questions. I'm to. going through some, you know, I saw Brazil God, you know, he, he has some questions on there. He has some great questions. Shout out mm. to the Brazil God. Mm. Uh, I just need to get your, I wanted to get your opinion on that. And, uh, the poker awards, did you pay attention to the poker awards that I was at the poker awards? They put on a great event and, uh, you know, shout out to Big J, my man Jamin, one vlogger of the year. Shout out to Jamin. Did you did you pay attention to Poker Words at all? The Poker's Poker's answer I, to the I, Emmys, I, I, Poker's I answers to the talk. Oscars, Doug. I, I just don't want to talk about the Poker Awards. <laughs> I, I just don't want Bro. to. I, Why not? I, I have my I have my, look. I have strong opinions about the Poker Awards. I know, but I also know that a lot of people that I'm friends with or close with care about them, so I just don't want to. I don't want to do it. Okay. I would agree. You should have. You should have won more poker I just, awards. Just, I, I agree th with you. Th there's just no reason. For I me to do, do agree this, with you. Like, you it, got my. If it was my awards, you'd be. You'd be winner. I, I'm not getting baited out on this. I'm just not getting baited out. <laughs> I, I, I've said my piece many times. I don't want to talk about the poker awards. All right, no poker awards for Doug. Doug what how do you feel about charity poker too? This is something that's kind of been trending here more in Vegas. I've been getting a part of that. Right, what are your thoughts on charity? I know you've had strong opinions on charity in the past about. I think there was one about giving money away during a challenge, something like that. You're like, there's no fucking way I'm doing that or something like that. But what are your thoughts about charity poker? And what do you think about playing poker for fun and being able to generate money for potentially good causes that are going to help out the community around you through the game of poker that we love? Yeah, I, I think I think using poker to do good things is a positive, net positive. Um, as long as like that is the goal, I feel like a lot of charity stuff ends up turning into like, look at how awesome I am. I gave all this money away. So as long as the money is being effectively used and the goal of the charity really is to help people, then, you know, that's, that, that's cool. I, I'm not too familiar with charity. The charity is the, the charity series of poker, charity series right? of poker. Yeah. I'm not too, too familiar with it, but, um, I have heard of it before and I'm, I'm sure that they're raising for some good causes. So I, I think poker is a nice vehicle to, to, to help, um, impact communities in positive ways. Yeah, I've been to a lot of their events last year, and um, it's such a good time. You go there, have some drinks, talk to people, and, uh, you know, it's not the best poker, right? Nobody really knows how to play poker necessarily, but they do support some good causes. St. Jude, they work with the Golden Knights. I think they work with one, maybe one of the Raiders foundations. They work with some autism foundations, and, um, and yeah, I don't know. It's, like, pretty fun events, and it seems like overall, as long as they're doing what they say they're going to do, then... Um, you know, it should be something worth supporting, right? It's like a different way to, to engage with poker as such serious poker players. You know, I feel like you're a very serious poker player. I've been a very serious poker player for a long time. You know, serious poker players don't always enjoy fun player poker and drinking and they want everyone to play optimal. And if they see a bad play, they're going to, oh my God, like what's happening? You know, they're going to freak out about it. But I feel like these events, it's like everyone goes there, has a good time. Oh, whatever, all in, rebuys. It's just a different environment. And uh, I personally enjoyed them. So I'd recommend, you know, if you have some, check them out and hopefully try you know, I'm trying, people are asking me to partner on things. So I'm trying to find good foundations. I'm trying to find trustworthy foundations to work with too. So, you know, partnerships is always a risk, right? It's like, you're getting pitched so many. How do you deal with that, Doug? Because you get pitches on another level and everybody wants to work with you, bro. I, I hear a lot of people try to get, you know, they're always hitting me up. Hey, can you talk me to Doug about this idea? I'm like, yeah, you know, let me like the right idea. I'll pass it to Doug. But for the most part, you know, I, I don't know, like it, it seems a little weird, but you know, what are your thoughts on handling partnerships and opportunities and how do you sort of navigate all yeah. the potential risks that come with that for you? Yeah. So generally speaking, I just pass on almost every partnership because I have so much stuff that I want to work on. That's my, my, myself, like my own company, it's my own, whatever. And, um, I don't want to dilute that with other brands. Um, so I don't do too many partnership things. That said, in select instances, if I think it can be high value both ways, then I'm, I'm open to those and I'm happy to kind of flush them out. But what I usually find with partnerships, it's someone asking me for something that's one-sided. It's rarely that it's equal both ways. And so that makes it kind of tough. Also, 
not many instances really make sense for both parties. So I guess like I don't have like a necessary I don't have necessarily like a set approach to the way that I deal with partnerships, but um, when you have your own companies, it, it really minimizes the amount of you know quote unquote partnerships you want to take because look like you only get so much you can advertise. You only have so many things you can talk about. You only have so much you can promote. You only have so much you can build. Why dilute that with things that are not your own companies? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That makes it difficult. But there still are situations like, you know, for example, maybe like the ad spot at the lodge or things like that, or maybe putting on an event at the lodge could make sense. Or, um, you know, there, there are ways that I could potentially see something happening, but it's difficult. Usually partnerships end up being one way, one, one way requests. Yeah, I try to really get to know uh, the people I'm working with. You know, Gorilla Gaming is one of my going to be one of my sponsors. 2024, I got we got this. Uh, I got I got to get a graphic for these guys. Gorilla Game Baby, they got the poker tables over here. They make custom tables. They make tables for World Series of Poker and a bunch of other card rooms all around the world. And uh, they were one of my first supporters. Shout out to my man Gorilla Glenn. You guys know the Gorilla. He's been a big mainstay on my channel. So my personally, when I'm trying to find the partnerships, I'm trying to find people to work with or products to promote or services to promote. You know, I'm trying to be overly careful because I've just seen too many scams. I've seen too many people that aren't running, you know, what they say they're going to do. And that's always a worry when you're investing in a new partnership or a new opportunity is you just don't totally. know. That's why I really like working with people I've known a long time. Like I got no problem upswing poker, right? I love to promote upswing poker because I know that they're going to try to deliver the quality of product we had mentioned earlier, but they say, but this is important shit. And that's what I like about the lodge. I feel like the lodge, if you send someone down there for a lodge tournament, you know, they're going to get a great time. They're going to have a good experience. They're going to have a chance to win and it's going to be a fair chance to win. So, you know, I think there's always a lot of companies out there in poker who are trying to do that same sort of thing and you just got to find them. And, and I don't know, the online casinos really scare me in terms of working with for my own end. I just don't know what's happening in these casinos. And um, obviously if you're a poker player, that's the best way for you to make money is for you to be sponsored by an online casino and they're going to pay you a bunch of money. They're going to invest in your content. They're going to give you some sort of revenue share based on players you bring in. And we've seen a lot of players go that route where they're making these big deals and stuff like that. We haven't really seen you yeah. go that route with being sponsored by a site. And is that something you'd ever want to do and take on that sort of, you know, face of a, of a company? I mean, you already are your face of your own companies, right? But would you ever want to do that with a poker site? No, no. No, I mean, I, I, I don't think so. I mean, like everyone has a price. If someone came up to me and was like, Doug, you are a new guy and you're going to be paid whatever number of million dollars a year. I'd be like, where do I sign? Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, I, 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 I really can't imagine it. And it, as it stands today, um, yeah, it's difficult with companies, right? Cause like, like with the lodge, we get people that want ad spots and then, you know, we have to do background checks and it's like, Oh, is this debatable or not? And then a lot of times you have to make a decision and, um, that's always difficult. Like, the the coin flex situation that happened a couple of years ago was tough. Uh, that that was really tough for me to deal with and to go through, um, especially when like, you know, I got attorneys that are saying to me like, you cannot say sorry here in any way because you did not do anything, and if you say that, then you are now liable. So you can only say sorry if you're okay losing a lawsuit because you did not do anything. So then I, I'm supposed to take that and then publicly say, like, what can I say? You know what I'm saying? Like, people are like, dude, just say, say my bad. It's like, if I say my bad, then I'm now liable for this thing I didn't do. <laughs> so, like, what, what is the line here? Um, and I think, like, getting put in a spot that that was that difficult. Uh, funny stat, by the way. You know the biggest U.S. loser? The person that lost the most money in the U.S. platform was me. Mm-hmm. Just a nice little cherry on top of the thing. Didn't even make money. But anyway, putting all that to the side. Um, I think one of the valuable takeaways that I learned from that whole debacle was just like, one of the reasons why I don't like partnering with people is I don't like having to trust people to do the right thing. Uh, and those guys, like, you know, whether it was intentional or not, they fucked it up and they stole a lot of money. And um, I think like having to put your faith in other people like that, like that's just not something I want to do again, especially not for like something serious, like, like, financial stuff mm -hmm. uh you know if i'm running a business like the finances are going to be are going to be well put together like your money is safe um but when you're just promoting someone else you can't say that same thing so i guess like it was a difficult thing to go through but uh i did learn from that and what i learned was like i don't really want partners unless it really makes sense 
and I know them well, and there's a lot of value both ways. Uh, I want to offer good products. I want to promote my own thing. I want to run my own ship. I want to be my own captain and just see, see where I can take it. And, uh, you know, I, I know that like if I'm in charge that we're going to do right by people and I'm not going to put myself in a position where I have no control over an entity that, you know, kind of reflects back on me. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So you feel like that's going to put you more even focused on the lodge and focused on upswing and kind of focused on building out new ideas. Maybe there's a new idea for something you could do another brand or you never know what exactly what could take place, but yeah, that makes sense. I mean, that experience was so hard for, I, I saw you go through that and, you know, I know that you're not trying to promote, that's not your intention, right? It's never been your intention as from, from my opinion, from watching you to promote a company like that, that if you promote a company, I know that you in your mind feel like it's going to be hundred percent safe and it's going to be something that you would recommend people use and you get behind it. And I think with crypto, a lot of people just, you know, you put your faith in things and a lot of things didn't work that people put their faith in. A lot of these exchanges went down. They took people's money and there's plenty of people out there who had good intentions, who promoted these crypto exchanges that ended up eventually taking all their money. And there's exchanges that are doing that now. So it's just a very, you know, very uncertain world out there in crypto. And, um, you know, we're seeing that every day, right? It's just ever changing and they're trying to regulate it. So you know, I think some people might look at it one way. Other people say, hey, you know, you recommended it to the best of your ability and it didn't work out, but you learn from that. And now you move forward and you try to make it better and you try not to have that same mistake happen again. And it seems like that's the path you've taken where, you know, better, almost safe than sorry. Yeah, look like, um, you know, it wasn't like it was all small guys that promoted crypto sites like Curry and Tom Brady were FTX guys like that one went under in a blaze of glory as well although probably because it's a bigger site they'll probably get paid uh, creditors probably gonna make it easy not back but regardless um yeah i mean like it, it, it's difficult in this space because sometimes it can even be people that historically have done things right and then they just turn like, they're just like you know the same you never know. Be, like breaking bad or whatever mm -hmm. uh where it's like things that good track record a lot of other companies and then they just become total pieces of shit um that happens so um yeah i guess like kind of just like broadly speaking, regardless of how people feel about that subject, uh, I, I definitely learned to not put myself in that position and just uh, run my own, run my own ship, man. Run your own ship. You want a floating uh, Bitcoin back there? You want a floating Bitcoin moon? I'm gonna, I'm gonna get, send you one. Uh, I, I think, I think we're gonna stick away from all of the crypto. <laughs> you don't want the Bitcoin moon? <laughs> I mean, Same like, Bitcoin like, I, moon. I, I, I've still, I've still been invested in, in crypto and uh, I'm still, you know, I, I'm still, long-term bullish on it i have no opinion on like short-term price fluctuations obviously shit's crazy right now everyone's just chattering away it's like the only thing i see on only thing i see right now on twitter are bitcoin and sydney sweeney's tips that's it those are the only two things that are happening on twitter oh. there's like yeah. 500 tweets about that you're not you're not following the ai the ai war the agi war the open ai mark injury and elon musk maybe, that whole maybe, maybe that was maybe i just didn't see those tweets <laughs> <laughs> i don't know you know what I'm talking about, right? There's like a million tweets about that right now. I've seen it. Yeah. I mean, the, the yeah, tits like, or the other one? Which one are you talking about? Um, Both. Oh, both. Okay. Both, yeah. I don't yeah, know. I, I'm like, I feel like my Twitter is all, all like there's basketball, there's tech, there's poker, there's some memes, there's people like getting shot. I, my timeline is out of line, really. I mean, there's so much random stuff on Twitter. What do you think about poker Twitter? Are you still using it? Or I see you posting on there, you know, at a decent frequency, but are you still engaged in that whole world at all? I mean, like I, I tweet some stuff like what I'm up to or what's going on, um, but I'm not really getting in the back and forths anymore. I just, at least currently, just not not my, my cup of tea. Yeah, you're over you're over the the beefs for now. Yeah, I mean, listen, it ain't, it ain't really that heated up yet. You know, it's still March. It's still early March fourth. You know, what's really happening in March? So, dude, they were getting heated like a month ago. There was like the, um, <laughs> the uh, 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 Garrett Adelstein uh, Ryan Feldman thing. Yeah, you see they, that? Like, what do you think about like, that? Factor fiction. What do you well, think about you that? You sent that to me, I think, right? And then it was five hours. I was like, Joey, I'm not going through no, this. No, I this gave you like... a timestamp. I said, go to the timestamp. It's, it's fun. I'm telling you, bro. Go to the timestamp. Um, those, those guys, what is with those guys? On. Those LA people. LA people are different, dog. I'm telling you right now. These LA people, they love to fight. They love the dramaticness. They, it's Hollywood out there. These guys are. All yeah. about what do you think about that whole situation? Should Garrett, we got the sign guy out there saying Garrett should give the money back. You know, people are still getting on him about that. We want to see Garrett play more. I'm ready to see this fucking guy play. 
I want to see him down at the Lodge. I want to see him in T-Mobile Arena. I want to see him in everywhere. So what's your opinion about that whole situation now and, and where that thing stands? Because obviously that was that was a, a heated, well, I, I, heated yeah, thing. Yeah, I, I don't... Look, so I think that at the start, he definitely should have given the money to a third party, had someone arbitrate, and then he wouldn't have actually had almost any of the blowback he had, frankly. Um, I think it was almost entirely taking the money. So he could have avoided pretty much this entire issue if he'd wanted to, but he made a mistake. I think at this point, I kind of think he just has to double down and just, just never get the money back because now there's camps, right? And you don't want your camp to turn on you. So mm -hmm. even if he gave the money back, it's not going to really change the other camps view at him and it might change his camps. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's almost like it's almost like um, like Trump like a bit where like now there's two camps. There's the pro Garrett and there's the anti Garrett and like people have kind of decided that, that there's not a lot that will change their mind. But if he does something that maybe hurts his camp, it might. So he probably I'm just talking about purely from the perspective of like what's optimal for him publicly. He probably just kind of has to write out this thing that he did to himself, but he certainly should have given it to a third party and arbitrated. I mean, that would have been the better, the smarter move. Mm -hmm. Not give it to not give it charity and give it a good. I mean, at least you have the money somewhere. You can maybe give it back if you want to. You know, maybe at some giving, point you decide, hey, giving it the charity was. Yeah, I mean, I don't need. To, I don't to think you like. I'm telling you, there's something about you and charity, Doug. I'm, I called that out earlier. Like, I, I, well, I, I, I don't like it. I don't like it, Joy, when it's like that, where it's like, <laughs> let me give this to someone to like change how this looks you know what i'm saying yeah i, I, I mean like you've that. mentioned that before yeah you've mentioned i don't that like that because it seems kind of fake to me and it seems like i'm gonna pull charity in here as like a shield mm. where it kind of deflects but it doesn't actually solve the crux of the issue it's just like a way to to deflect so i think if you're actually trying like let me get, like i think what dan smith does i think the way he does that is really trying to help i don't think dan smith is like out there because he wants to be viewed a certain way. I, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But I, I really do feel like the double up drive thing that he does, he is really trying to make an impactful, positive difference. And I think that's cool. But I feel like when charity gets thrown into a lot of poker issues, it's not really to help people. It's like, you know what I'm saying, right? I know like what you're saying. It feels yeah. weird. It feels wrong to me. It feels like a little bit weird, a little bit wrong, a little bit off. Maybe, maybe I'm crazy. I don't know. Maybe people in the chat might know what I'm talking about. Maybe not. Yeah, know. everyone's got, like I said, I know, you know, a lot of people do chair. They do charity things to look good. And, um, you know, I don't know in that situation, right? It was a very explosive situation, emotional situation. I was talking with Garrett at the time, talking with Robbie at the time. You know, these guys aren't necessarily in their right mind. They're not making always the best decisions. So, you know, maybe at the time he said, hey, you know, I'm going to at least do something good with this. I'm going to, instead of keep it, Instead of give it back, I'm just going to give it to charity. And, you know, who knows what happened here? He, he's got his own thesis, right? He thinks something happened. He's doing his investigation. He's got a story in mind to tell. And, um, you know, we got to wait for him to tell it. So I see what you're saying about the whole charity aspect of things. And I guess my just main point now is what, you know, about the whole money thing. Because like I said, this sign guy is literally tweeted at me approximately 5,000 times. Tag, he's got a sign that he goes around L.A., Doug, and it says... Garrett should pay Robbie the money back on the I've fucking... I've seen this guy. The guy what stands outside with the sign, bro. And his name's the sign guy. And I guess he works at Walmart. And uh, he did an interview. I think he worked at Walmart. Maybe he doesn't work there anymore. But the guy is dedicated. He's a dedicated man. Robbie, simping for Robbie, is still in season. And uh, she still got her fans out there. So, um, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, the whole money back thing. I guess if he thinks he really did it, then... I don't think he's gonna do it. I don't think he's giving this. I don't think he's giving her the money back. The the sign guy seems legitimately nuts to me. Uh, the fact that this much time has passed and we're still, you know, out there on the streets with the sign. But you know what, Joey? Let's look at the other side of this. Isn't it nice to have something in life that you're just passionate about? <laughs> Imagine finding something you're as passionate about as sign guy is passionate about this. And maybe we could all learn a little something from Sign Guy on finding something that calls to you and locking in on it for the enjoyment and fulfillment that comes with having passion in your life. Amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. Amen's in the chat. Listen, big shout out to everybody in the Legion. Shout out to everybody been tuning in, leaving all the comments, leaving all the questions. Actually, Doug, I mean, you know, first of all, I love the passion. I found this. Bad. I found my only heads up trophy on my trophy shelf today and Ooh. it coinc actually it's called the not a coincidence it's called the Bally's Power Poker Series believe it or not this is the fucking name of this thing 
And it only came after I railed your heads up match versus Daniel Negreanu when I watched you guys every day for four hours and had commentary. And then the next tournament I played, I won the heads up tournament. So this will always remain high in my heart of a great time during coronavirus when you backed the fucking truck up and and had a great performance. Power poker is my trophy going to always remember. It's going to show my passion for heads up. And uh, amen, Doug. I mean, listen. That was a, that was a little sad when, when the heads up challenge came to an end. I mean, I feel like so it was sad. a really random tangent for like six months of my life. But like. Yeah, like it was something to be passionate about and work towards and lock in. I, I, I enjoyed that. Yeah, you weren't, I mean, listen, you weren't happy. I remember those December, like January. You're like, I'm, I'm done. I'm quitting forever. I'm like, buddy, you'll be okay. Like you're going to, you up 700K. Oh. It's not, we lock in. You got a couple more weeks left. You're going to take it down. You're going to, you know, you're going to do it. And then, uh, but I understand it was emotional, right? You were like all in on that. That was your, that was your sign yeah, I mean, moment. <laughs> I, I mean, I couldn't lose. If I lost, it was over for me. That was like, it was... Yeah, bro, you're gonna, was, you're gonna go down in history. Either, no, yeah, it was can't. basically, it was it. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I had to lock in. Yeah, I think everyone loved that. And uh, I know I love that. I love watching that. It was a lot of fun to watch those those sessions. And um, even seeing Mike Daniels learn something from that. You know, he's got this whole new renewed spirit to dedicate himself to poker. He's taking his training seriously. He's still so serious to the game. Like, it's very impressive how serious the guy's taking it at 2024 when he really doesn't need to do anything like that at all. And you still got a guy... When I'm looking for inspiration at certain parts of poker, I'm looking for these guys that are have longevity. You know, how are they doing this? Like, how are they still around yeah, at 50? Nuts. How are they still grinding? How do they still care? Right. That's what I mean. Like, how do these people still care? Because it's so hard to care for so long, and he's so public. He's in the spotlight. I actually have a theory on this, Joey. Give it to me. What do you got? Because I got. I'm trying to figure it out. I think it's based on self worth. Okay. And I think that most of the guys that are still big in poker today that were big before, most, not all, but most, I think being a good poker player is part of their identity. And so they can't just let it go because then it's like letting go of a key part of who they are as a person. Mm -hmm. And I think that that would explain at least a few of the bigger guys. Um, there are definitely people that's not true. Like Ivy is someone that is definitely not true. Um, but I think broadly speaking, most of the people that have been poker players for a long time and well-known and successful, whatever, it's part of who they view themselves as who they are. And I don't think that's something that you can let go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's hard. I mean, I think for me, even when I was making content and trying to disconnect from my poker identity, it was really hard not to see yourself as a poker player. And, you know, that's who I identified with for so long as being. And then poker content creator, talking about poker, playing poker, all things poker. And... You know, I really had to take a long break and just get new thoughts in my head because it was impossible to disconnect with that identity. So I can understand that desire to want to be in the game, to want to be in the mix, to want to be around, to want to keep battling. And I think these some of these guys have figured out how to use sponsorships and how to use partnerships to their advantage. And when you get to a certain level, you can sell action forever. So, you know, as long as you want to keep playing, there's going to be a buyer for your action at a certain level. So, well, you know, I, yeah, I think most of the big guys, they've, they have enough money to where they could play basically anything that they want. So they don't need to even need to sell action, um, mm -hmm. except for maybe the biggest stuff uh, or if they're just being nits with their money or whatever. But I think, um, yeah, I, I think, I think it, it, it's just about who they are mm -hmm. and, and a part of their identity. No, it's interesting. I, I, I do find it kind of interesting to think about. Cause like for me, like I'll get fired up every now and then, but like, oh, I'll go like play this game or event or whatever, or like battle it out. But I don't view poker playing as like who I am. You know what I'm saying? Like I can see like, that. I think yeah. I, I'm, I'm proud of like where I reached in my career. I'm very proud of like being, as some would say, debatably the best heads up player in the world. Um, but I don't view that as like, Oh yeah, I'm a poker player. Like, I view it as like, I'm Doug. I have a family. I like, I, I have a lot of pursuits that I like. I, I do play poker, but I also run businesses and I like to invest in things. And I, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm into health and fitness stuff. And like, like I, I don't view it as like, I'm a poker player. Mm -hmm. I, view, I, I kind of view myself as not a poker player, honestly. Like I play like a few times a month or whatever. You're, um, you're, so, you're a businessman, a family man. Aspiring businessman. A modern De modern human. De debatably, debatably a businessman. Debatably a businessman. The President Polk, Mr. President Polk. I mean, listen, I remember ever going back 2008, Doug, you were always had that entrepreneurial spirit, that investing spirit. You know, you one of the first guys. I remember you, you boosted me to 50, 50 cent dollar. Thank you, Doug. 
I still, you know, I still You're think welcome. about that. I still, because I'm reflect, I've been reflecting a lot. I'm like, man, how the hell did I get here? 38 years old, poker player, 2024. I'm still here talking with Doug. Doug's still down there building, building, building. I'm like, this is, what a crazy, like, experience this has been being in this poker world. We, I started when I was 21, 22 years old. You started when you were maybe younger than me. And uh, I think, yeah, you were like, I mean, you were pretty young. So, so crazy to be in our 30s still doing this stuff. And uh, I mean, I still enjoy it. Like, you look at it negative, you can get positive. There's been points in my time when I looked at it like both. But uh, I think it's exciting. It's, it's something to be grateful for to be able to be in a position where people still want to listen to you. They still care what you got to say. And, um, you know, anything's possible. So, I mean, look, man. How many years later, a thousand people will still show up and listen to the same two guys? That's crazy, bro. I, mean, <laughs> I get so much feedback from people. They're right. like, Poppy, you got it. Like, when are you and Doug going to do another show again? I'm like, I'm like yeah, when, when's that? I'm like, we, how many, we have, we used to do, and it was so, you know, what I've really taken away. There's a few things I've taken away from, from working with you is that you're one of the easiest people to work with, in my opinion, for me, right? You want high quality and you are down for a good idea. And for me, it was always like, hey, you know, let's, you know, let's do a show. Let's do it. There was no like, hey, like, let's court, like, you know, this, it's like, oh, let's just do that time and let's fucking make it happen. Let's make a good show. Let's try to put our effort into it. Let's put, put a good energy into it. And it was always just so easy to, to work with you. And I think you learn working in poker that that's not always the case working with a lot of people and they don't have that same quality level of, of what they want to put out there and how they want to perform. And, yeah. you know, with you, you've always shown that. I guess, aspirational ability to want to do achievements. You know, you like grinding up the stakes. You like beating the game. You like figuring out how to get better. You like figuring out how to fucking improve your business, your poker, your content, your family, your friendship, whatever. And, uh, you know, that's been cool to see. It's been cool to be a part of. I feel like more people, they need people like that in their lives to help them, you know, keep inspiring to do things. Otherwise, it's so easy to just kind of chill. And, you know, not to say that people, I, I like chilling too. It's It's been peaceful. I've been in modes like that, but... um. You know, I think yeah, it's cool. And I think I think you, you've done a lot for the poker community at large over the last however many years. I mean, like, you know, you've had an incredible number of great guests on here. You've talked about the stories that need to get talked about. You've really managed to, to I think, put poker out there in a way that people don't really get a chance to see. I, mean, I think, like, one of the cool things for both of us is, like, we've been sort of kind of like our own, doing our own thing in a world where a lot of people just kind of, like, jumped on. Um, a bandwagon or a poker site or whatever. We kind of both did our own thing. And, um, you know, we've been friend, friends for a lot of years now, Joey. It's been been many, many years. Yeah, I know. So crazy. I mean, it, 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 goes, it really, it's so crazy. That's I'm, damn, I'm like, damn, I can't believe it. 38 years old. I'm 38. I, I used to be the young guy in tank tops and trying to take, take care of my skin and, you know, and now I'm like, damn, what am I going to do? <laughs> like, oh, my God, do I got to be an investor. I got to be interested in finance. <laughs> I got to get into the government. I'm like, oh, my God, is this like what? This oh, is what government it, poppy. Is this what it means? I mean, I don't know. Dude, like, you got you, you to be a sheriff. A sheriff? Okay. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I, don't, I don't show know. up at ACR headquarters. I think hey, they need to the help. Hey there, partner. Hey. <laughs> Listen, we just want good games, okay? You know, Phil this Nagy. town ain't big enough for the bots of us. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, listen, chat. Give me a few more topics. We're gonna wrap it up here soon. Uh, but yeah, first a uh, first episode back. Power Poker 2024. I'm gonna be staying up today. I got a few stories. I'm gonna be following one, including, of course, Doug and the Lodge. And um, you know, I feel like the Lodge is one of the most interesting stories I'm personally been tracking this year. World Poker Tour versus World Series of Poker. You guys saw what happened. Me and Doug didn't talk about this, but you saw what happened. WPT put up the World Championships, this great December event. They crushed it. World Series of Poker next year said, hey, you know what? Instead of letting you guys do that, we're actually just going to have a Bahama event at the same time. And, you know, we're going to try to stop the momentum of the championship. And, you know, in my opinion, declared a little bit of a, a war in some ways against uh, WPT. And I don't know what to expect now, but I feel like these guys are at another level of competition, Doug. WPT versus WSOP, GG, you know, you got some people trying to figure out who they're working with, but it seems like we do got a battle building here. And, um, you know, what's your opinion about the future of WPT versus GG Poker versus World yeah. Series Poker versus WPT Global, kind of, you know, all in between? Yeah, it feels like there's really like two major forces now in the tournament world, right? You got WPT and you got WSOP, and th there is kind of a line in the sand. Historically, these brands just tried to tried to avoid each other, and I think generally speaking, had success doing so. 
But I guess like one way to look at this, and I can talk about this a little bit as an operator myself now, is like there's only so much real estate, right? And there's only so many tournaments people are going to be willing to play. So there is some advantage in kind of carving out your space and like maybe even competing in some time slots. Those things said, I think it's a lot better just to communicate with the other person and just try and create like a reasonable schedule, right? Like, would it be that insane if they just like, okay, let's do the Bahamas thing before the win thing or whatever? Um, you know, maybe they thought that that was absolutely not possible or that they could compete or whatever, but I don't see a reason why these Goliath players in the poker scene are going to just go after the exact same time slots. And like, I, it just, it just seems like people are going to brick guarantees and like, it's going to get sloppy. I mean, that's great for players. Obviously, if you have these massive guarantees, like, um, how much did uh, WPT miss their main bet? Was it like two two million? Yeah, I think it was about two and two point five million, something like that. Two and a half million or two million one and a half, something did like that. Did the Mahamas cover everything? Uh, not sure. I'm not sure. I didn't. I didn't really follow too close. I saw they had a big cash game down there, but I, I didn't really see too much about those events. I was really paying attention to the WPT event and the Poker Stars and NAPT event just happened. I got a, I talked with them about that event, and um, you know they're getting back into North America as well. They did have some episodes of the big game and. Uh, that seemed pretty exciting. And you know, I tracked that event because they hit me up a few weeks ahead of time and they said, Hey, do you want to be a part of this event? You know, we'll, we'll spot, be like a sponsor player for the event. And uh, I was like, damn, this is my fucking dream. When I was 22 years old, it was to be sponsored by poker stars for their first NAPT event in 2024. I was like, damn, this is the crazy, like what's happened in my life that I've come to here. But, uh, you know, I didn't, I chose not to work with them for that event, but I did follow the event. They did it beforehand, which, you know, I think a lot of people appreciated. And then WSOP just like dropping the Bahamas down there, especially when you got January, January's wide open to make the best event, you know, but I understand they're trying to cut off some momentum WPT Global's building with their new strategy for ambassadors and they're building their poker site. And, uh, you know, it makes sense. I, I can see it from, from both the sides, but I agree but with you. you really, that, but do you really compete with the, do you really cut them off though with that strategy? Cause like they still get the exact same thing. So like, what are you uh, accomplishing? Yeah, maybe. I mean, I don't know. Right. You know, it's, it's more of a compounding thing now where maybe not year two WPT championship isn't what it's going to be in year five, but you can tell the scale that they're growing at. I've been tracking that event. I worked with them last year on that event. You can see they got big aspirations. And once the win, our win are seeing, if the win see results and the wins get motivated and the win decides to put some investment into that and really try to blow it up, then, you know, you never know what's possible with them. And I feel like with WPT, they're doing the voyage now. They're, are you going on, are you going to do the voyage? Are you going on the voyage? No. I'm going to be a landlubber for that one. Yeah, they've been, they pitched me. Listen, they've done a great job. I do want to shout out WPT partnership. They've done a great job and pitching me on that event, but I've seen too many boat videos on TikTok of, the, of and this, this a cruise sounds scary, honestly. And I've been telling them that I'm scared of the cruise. I would love to go on a cruise. I'd love, I love scary. the scary. It, bro, have you not seen these videos on social media? It's just like it's kind of scary. Like the boats are like rocking. There's like water coming oh. in the boat. I don't know. Like I, I, I don't know. Be fine. I got to Yeah, I'm, I know. I'm, I'm not a big cruise guy, generally speaking. I, I I'm, I, I'm kind of, I, I, I'm not going on. I'm not going on the cruise. Yeah, I mean, I'm a supporter of the cruise. I'm a supporter of WPT. I happily, I don't mind promoting the cruise and telling people they should check out the cruise. If you like a cruise, it looks like it's going to be sick. But for me, I'm like, I don't. Maybe I'll watch the cruise. Maybe next year. But I'm still, I'm still on the fence. You never know. We got about 30 days away. But you know, WPT, like I said, they're trying to do their thing. It's a story I'm following, Doug. I'm going to be reporting actually a lot more on the stories. It's been my, one of my number one stories I've been following the past couple of years. Is the evolution of the poker reality and the content creators and, you know, people creating these leagues and creating these event series and basically building out the events that the players play and the fans watch. And, you know, I really feel like the lodge is a serious player now in that conversation too. So it's going to be exciting to see how you move, how you groove. I know that you guys are looking to, you know, like you said, expand and um, maybe you guys are looking for some new investors down there. You never know what the lodge is going to pull up their sleeve. So I'm excited to be following along. Chat, give me a few questions. I want to let Doug go. I've been keeping Doug. You know, we, we started a little bit late, but we've been here about two hours. Is this gonna? What do you think, Doug? Should we do this a little more on a regular cadence and kind of have our mm -hmm. uh, have our topics we talk about? And and uh, I know the fans like to see that. Yeah, I was thinking about that actually. What what if we did like monthly? What if we did like first month, first Monday of the month? We just fired one up. Let's do it. I'm in for that. Yeah, I mean, I think that'd be something great. Plus, I've been. I like really. I. I hate to admit it, but I care too much about this stuff, Doug. And I got a lot of passion. Like I said, I'm getting a lot of offers. So it looks like, you know, it looks like I'm going to maybe stay in this game in some capacity. I don't really want to be getting involved in any craziness. You know, I'll let Berkey and Dean Eggs and those guys beef and argue. And, you know, Berkey's Smart like, move. 
He's doing, you know, other people are kind of in the community now where they can handle a lot of those things. And a lot of my content is going to be a lot more positive focused and promoting of the great stories. And, you know, I think there's a lot of underrated stories, like I said out there. So I'm going to be talking about those more. I'm going to be doing a lot of podcasts with some interesting people up here outside of poker, inside of poker as well. So uh, I'm excited, man. It's going to be, I feel like 2024 is really just getting started. And um, it is. Guys, I know I know for your next event, right? Your next event is going to be what the, the big event is going to be. The high stakes event is going to be the... What is it? What week is that? Third week or fourth week? Third, third week of uh, March? Or what, what okay, we got a lot of stuff coming up. We have a $300 tournament that has a 500K guarantee in two weeks, a week and a half. So that's going to be big. Um, then we have a, a high stakes streams on the 16th and 17th. Okay. So those will be very good. We have some people coming to town that are going to be great. Um, then in um, April, our championship series starts. So in late April into mid May, we have our championship LCS series. Some massive fields on the weekends. Uh, we're going to have a bunch of streams through that as well. That should be good. And then that final week, I think it's like the second week of May, we have a high roller series culminating in the LCS main event. Two, uh, $2 million guarantee, $3,000 buy-in. So tons of stuff coming up at the Lodge. If you've not made the trip over, I strongly recommend it. Um, we got it. We got to get you know, you've seen You've seen this tool I have amplified, this company I invested in. It's an auction tool. So basically it allows for events or experiences to build a special package for your fans and then your fans get to bid on it and then the winner gets to go have the experience and then you can make content of it, use it for marketing, use it for promotion. So right now we're mainly in the in the music industry. So our big main partner is EDC. So we got more EDC experiences coming up this year. We partnered with them last year. And right now we found the use case for the tool to be classic memorabilia from I guess like I wouldn't say like niche legends, but they are legends of dance music. Like they're legends of collectors. They're, you know, they've got these sick collections that apparently in that world people love. I don't know the memorabilia world, but apparently it's a big world. So, but we're going to be doing more poker stuff here. You know, maybe we might do something with the Celebrity Poker Tour. We've been talking to them about doing an experience there. My thought process was who am I going to offer that to in poker would, you know, one of the first person I'd offer that to out of respect for you and the help you've given me is to you, to the lodge. So if you want to take a look at that, Maybe do something for your fan, give a special fan experience, you know, go down there and maybe they get some great barbecue. Maybe they got a nice place to stay. They yeah, maybe get to play over. on a stream or something like that. But I, I've been kind of thinking about this idea for a while because he's my, my founder has been asking me, who do I want to, you know, who would I want to have do an experience for their fans? So I'm like, oh, you know, upswing, right? You got the, you got, you got some good content creators out there, but you take a look. I mean, I don't know. You decide. So I'm going to do something yeah, for over. my, my fans, right? Like, a. I'm doing my next event at the win. I don't want to give too much information away. It's not that it's not a secret, but in terms of what we're going to do, but it's going to be fun. It'll be a dinner. It'll be a show. It'll be poker. You don't know who's going to be at the poker game. And uh, hopefully we have some drinks. Claudia was the giveaway winner last time. She's in the chat. I gave away two packages last time on social media to that. And uh, the fans seem to love it. So I'm like, damn, we got to do this again. So uh, I'm excited. I'm open to all ideas, but yeah. Chat, that's uh, give me some more questions. That's all I got. Doug, you have any? You have anything else on your docket? No, or anything gonna, like that? I, I actually got to run here. But yeah, let's th get... thanks for thanks for having me on. It was great. Let's make this more regular. We'll, okay. we'll figure out we'll figure out next one. All right, Doug's gonna be out of here. Chat, I'm gonna give some shout outs. Doug, take out of here. And uh, chat, Peace. listen, got all love for everybody out there. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Much love to everybody. Claudia, Cafe Conleash, Vicky May. Doug's got to go. I'm giving shout outs. I'm fucking keeping this train moving. I'm putting on some music in the background. I'm marching out the Legion, the Legion strong. Shout out to everybody in the chat. I play PLO, Miss Vicky May, Dustin H, Timo. I saw Christian Soto out there. We appreciate you guys very much. And uh, there's no plastic memorabilia NFTs. Blue Elvis, Ramon, Legion strong. <laughs> Ryola never cheated, Jeff R, RMX, Adamowski, Eden Rock, shout out to Eden. Dark Angel, shout out to Donna, Too Fat Matt. We got a lot of love for you guys out there. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. And uh, it's just me and my big ass face right now, but we're gonna be back soon. Stay tuned for more updates on Twitter, on Instagram, Twitter at joingram one And um, that's it guys, that's what I got. Peace out to you all, much love, Godspeed, and uh, be back.